Hello, Greg. Can you hear me okay? Hello, yes. All good. Can you hear me? Yes. Good to see you again, fella. What's been happening? Not too much, actually. Yeah. How are you doing? Uh, I'm not not too bad. Um, just uh, just trying to get uh, the tennis stream on. Uh, are we playing in Miami at the moment? Well, Evans has won the first point, so good start. <laughs> right, okay, well, uh, you're right enough, um, my silly stream. But yeah, how is it? Gloucester, isn't it? It's Gloucester you're in. Yeah, Cheltenham specifically, but in Gloucestershire Cheltenham. area, yeah. So you must have had a, I know we're here to talk about tennis, but you must have had a, a mad couple of weeks when the, when the, the horses head down that way. Yeah, so yeah, the horse racing for about four days. I lost a lot of money, but that's fine. You know, that's horse racing. <laughs> do you ever go? Do you ever do you ever actually go to the event? I've been like three years ago, I think it was, something like that. It was when it was that one that started the kicked off the COVID and I didn't get COVID from it. All oh, right, okay. So that was twenty twenty, yeah. right? Okay. So you, you you were one of the reasons why the world went into lockdown. Only kidding, Greg. <laughs> I don't want you to get death threats. I, I never, um, I never caught it, you know. So not me. Ah, that's <laughs> what you think. That's what you think. Um, right. So um, on to the tennis. Um, lots going on in the tennis world. Lots for us to chat about. We've not chatted, I think, since uh, what match did we do again? Um, well, I can't remember now. It was. It was I Tommy know it was Paul. After, was it Tommy Paul? It was after Murray lost against Rublev, wasn't it? Or was it Indian Wales? I Jesus, I, I don't even know if it was. Was it the Aussie Open? I, I, I don't know. Anyway, it was, might have been Dubai. Might have been Dubai. Can't remember. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. But we don't know which one. Um, no. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, on this uh, Evo and uh, Sonigo, was it Sonigo? Sonigo. How, how are we pronouncing? Sonigo is how I say it. I think Sonigo. Right. Well, we'll, we'll go with the, the party line of Sonigo. Um, when I saw this in the draw um, and signed up to to commentate on it, um, I uh, I didn't see anything other than a a slog fest of a three setter. Um, I'm assuming that that you may be on similar um, similar wavelength to myself. Yeah, I think I can't remember when their last one was, but I remember it was an absolute slog fest, as you say. Like, yeah, two players that can be really inconsistent can be great on their day. So it depends which one of them turn up, really, or if they both turn up, how long it takes. <laughs> okay, interestingly enough, I uh, I've just been checking that out um, ahead of coming on tonight. Um, we will jump into the uh, the points as they happen, guys. Let us know if you want a blow by blow on the commentary. Uh, if you basically are maybe on the move, uh, you know, traveling and and what, and you can't get a stream of the tennis. Uh, tennis is um, something's getting a little bit more difficult to for, for some. So. Um, I can understand if you guys are just listening to us and uh, hoping to be updated on what's going on. We do have a scoreboard and we do have a Dan Evans break point in the very first game. Um, well, I'll talk you through this one for now. Um, so we've got Sonigo serving, 30-40. And I think he just served an ace, which he did. Um, served out wide. Uh, I, think, I think Dan Evans was thinking it was going down the tee there. Uh, have you been catching much of Miami so far? I know we're only a couple of days in, Greg, but um, yeah, have you managed to, to catch any of it? Yeah, a little bit. I watched um, the entirety of the Murray match, which was quite entertaining um, against Berrettini. That was one that I really wanted to watch. Um, I just got flashbacks to their uh, match in Australia. So um, yeah, <laughs> it was a bit like that, but three sets. So um, Strange yeah, one, though, wasn't it? I mean, uh, I actually came in bang on, like it was 5-2, in the second set, I was out um, for a bit last night. So when I came in, 5-2, um, and that didn't even tell the whole story because I, I wasn't even aware of the Berrettini dizziness. Um, yeah. And that obviously goes back, I think, after Kazao, um, he had he'd fainted as well. So it's really it humid um, for these guys. And, and, you know, we're seeing a couple of uh, players struggling with the heat. Um, but I think once I saw that and I saw a couple of rallies and I saw Murray, you know, close out the second set, um, Funnily enough, I was I was actually going to put now. Please do bet responsibly. But I was uh, I was going to put you know. I wonder what the odds on and Murray winning this match now. It's you know one set always playing the better player here, um, but there, were, there, were, there was there was no value in the odds. So I, I ditched it, and I also doubted myself. I said you know Murray could go and throw in a a dud third set. So um, so I saved myself from losing a tenner. Um, but yeah, no, I thought there was only going to be one winner. You know, Murray broke yeah. early. Um, I think the commentator, I actually watched it again this morning, funnily enough, and I don't usually do that, but I just I didn't think I gave it my full attention. The commentators at the start of the third were saying, you know, this match is done. Berrettini, I don't think I'll see it out till the end. So, you know, that was about two hours, three minutes on the clock at that point. Um, uh, so fair play to him. I think it, it went to like two and a half hours over. Um, so fair play to Berrettini seeing it out. Um, and I do hope he does come back because, you know, when he was 
you know, getting to Wimbledon finals and whatnot. I, he was a, a favourite for my of mine for a while, not only yeah. because he's a very good looking man. <laughs> Yeah, he was he was a favourite of mine as well. Just I love the way he plays. His forehand is great. His serving is awesome. Um, and yeah, I think they had a little moment at the at the net at the end, and he was just saying he felt a bit sick at the end. So um, yeah, hopefully it's nothing to worry about. And he he got those electrolytes into his system and and felt good afterwards. So should be fine. Yeah, yeah played by injuries. I think you know over the last yeah. eighteen months at least. Um, and Murray yeah, will know what that's like as well. So. <laughs> Absolutely, that's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. I suppose he can relate, can't he? Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, hopefully uh, Berrettini um, will come back into a bit of form, maybe in the clay season, uh, and we'll see where we are. Maybe come Wimbledon, which is his his favoured grass surface. Um, Sonego did hold serve, as you can see by the scoreboard. Um, you were saying, you know, the, the last time it was a, a slog fest. I was just looking beforehand, uh, and you are right. It was a it was a four setter. Um, this year at the Aussie Open, um, and, uh, and it was Sonego who came through that one. That was uh, Dan Evans won the first set actually, um, seven uh, six four, and then it was seven six six two seven six, so two tiebreakers, and then one of them was one ten eight, and that was only the second set uh, tiebreaker. So yeah, like you say, there's going to be a lot of rally ball, a lot of tennis. Um, Evans, you know, we've been here before with Evans, haven't we? You know. We looked at, I think, Washington last year, wasn't it? Where you know he had yeah. a real his biggest title win, with, with absolutely no form, um, and it just was that week was just like, this is this is totally ripped up the script of what we thought was going to happen. Um, he's not he's coming in again in a bit of a losing streak. I think it's a four match losing streak at the moment, um, so not really much to hype him up about. Um, but you know, with Dan Evans, he's he's a beautiful tennis player, isn't he? Um, when he's on it, um, yep. and you know, you're hoping it's not going to be. Um, you know, comfortable for, for Senegal. Yeah, and I remember that match. It was like full of quality. Both players were on it. And I don't I think it should have gone five sets. I think five sets would have been fair to both. So as you say, really close tie breaks, and that's probably what we'll get here is probably um tie break or two and close three sets, I'm I'm predicting. Yeah, I mean it's uh it's a wee bit of a shaky start. He did have that um break point. Um and uh but Right now, under a little bit of pressure on his serve, uh, on his serve here, he's, he's just served a fault, so he's on the second serve, fifteen thirty down. Um, you know, I don't want this to, to run away from Evo early mm. doors. Uh, I think a break here could deflate any kind of pre-match optimism. Uh, and as I say that, a net cord takes the ball wide of the tram lines for Senegal. Um, so we're back on to thirty all. Um, yeah, so you you were watching the Murray match. Anything else so far? Um, not not too too much. I think I watched um I watched a bit of Halep's comeback um yep. against uh, Badoza. Um, I can't really remember any any more memorable matches to be honest. Um, I I was watching a bit of the Murray doubles before we came on came yes. on live when he Tell was a set a break up as well. So which, yes. is, which is really good. <laughs> so that is really inter interesting pairing, isn't it? Um, I know, you know, yeah. Corda. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, Murray is currently playing in the doubles right this very second, um, and he is playing with Sebastian Corda. So um, uh, a United States UK alliance there, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, they're, they're setting a break up. I think the last time uh, Greg looked, and um, this is surely just for both players to you know get themselves into a bit of doubles for the Olympics coming up, isn't it? Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, I didn't think of that. I was just going to say like it's it's mad that. He's a 36-year-old looking after his body, and he's going to go and play doubles in a, in a Masters yeah. 1000. So it's kind of like it just shows his passion for the sport, really. Yeah, I think I think there's 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 a hint of uh, Olympic yeah. Games um, in France. Um, so and you know I think they've got to take the doubles chances when they can. There's, there's not a whole ton of them these days. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I think uh, that'll be the the plan. Um, whether or not you know if uh, I don't know how Corder's getting on in the singles so far. Is he played or is he to play? Um, I'll double check. I don't that. know actually. Yeah, uh, I was sure. just going to say because you know the, the worrying thing is you know the deeper they go into the the singles events, um, should they continue to progress, then you know is is um, is going to be ev evidently they're going to basically pull out of the doubles and then yeah. and, and that's where where I think the doubles players where it it kind of grates on them in terms of. You know, some players can't get into these doubles events. It's, it's kept places for singles. And then yeah. the singles guys play a couple of rounds and then chuck it. And then they're like, 
we could have been earning ranking points and money here. So, um, um, well, he's seeded in the in the draw, so he'll get a buy into the second round. He plays either Nava, an American qualifier, or Batista Agu. So is he seeded? Okay, so we're just called yeah. in the world right now, then. So. 28 seed, he's 28, 28 seed. Great, okay, great, yeah. Le- lovely stuff. Um, okay, and the winner, Sonego and Evans, both unseeded players. Um, Dan Evans got a game point, as you can see at the moment. Um, we'll just close this one out. But these guys, the, the, the winner will face Christopher Eubanks, another seeded player who um, who got a bye in the first round. Uh, Christopher Eubanks has got to be kind of on the cusp of um, no longer being a seeded player. What, what ranking is he? Yeah, he's, you know, he's not in the best of form at the moment, is he? 31. He's, he's the 31st seed. So, um, yeah. yeah, just a couple of players. You're just like, uh, what's it? Seren Dulo as well. He's uh, beside them in the draw. So, yeah, um, uh, yeah, it'll be uh, Evans or Senegal versus Christopher Eubanks. Uh, Evan has uh, leveled up the match so far. Um, we're 12 minutes in, only two games. And uh, that's uh, that's pretty much what we expected. Um Greg, tell me about your Indian Wells then. You know, um, I thought it was a really enjoyable tournament. Um, obviously, for us in the UK, time frames are a little bit different, um, a little bit difficult to, to take it all in. But, you know, I think a, a decent start, about 6, 7 p.m. for us. Um, yeah. And, you know, you could catch most matches before bedtime, um, depending when your bedtime is. Funnily enough, um, Saturday, I had it all planned out. Similar Alcaraz, the whole day was like, you know, around around the Sinner Alcaraz match, you know, I'm going to get down, have my dinner, I get the, the baby to bed and then, you know, sit down half past eight and, uh, and then, yeah, the, the delay, the, the, the dreaded yes. rain delay. Oh, it does, yes. <laughs> I was, I was sitting there at 10 to 11, quarter past 11 and I'd had a busy day. I'd been for a run. I'd been up very early with the baby and I was at like, quarter past 11, like, uh, I can't stay awake anymore. I said, like, what yeah. I'll do is I'll go to sleep. Hopefully this rain delay is ages. I set an alarm for two in the morning or something, so I did so, <laughs> and woke up at two in the morning. And Medvedev and Tommy Paul are warming up, so I've literally yeah. slept through the whole match from oh. start to finish. Um, so gutted at that. Um, chuffed that the Alcaraz, uh, the Alcaraz won. I've got to be honest, I'm, I'm uh, that's 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 where I find out, Greg, where my allegiance lies. Like you know, I like Sarah. Mm. I like the fact that he yeah. won the Aussie Open, like, you know, I was pleased at the end of that that he'd come back against Medvedev, that he'd beaten Djokovic. Um, and, uh, but, you know, when it comes to the, your players, you, you're like, you don't know who who you actually like more, who you want yeah, to win yeah, more. Yeah. And when it, but when it comes to play them, you know, when I found out that Alcaraz had won, there was a part of me that was like, I'm quite happy at that. So I think I'm in the Alcaraz camp, should this go on for the next 10, 15 years? Um, but yeah, did you manage to stay up? I've talked a lot. Did you manage to stay up? Did you watch it? What were your thoughts? I did. I did stay up. I was meant to actually commentate on Tong Tennis on the Paul Medvedev match, but obviously that got delayed to <laughs> oblivion, basically. So I uh, we didn't manage to do that one. But I did stay up for the Sinner Alcaraz match. Um, fantastic first set by Sinner. I mean, he just absolutely overwhelmed Alcaraz to you know uh, to unreal level. He was yeah every single point he was just getting in and in and in. So. Um, yeah, great set. And then halfway through the second, maybe at the tie break, well, not it wasn't tie break, was it? Just maybe sec- halfway through the second, he sort of felt bad physically. I think his his calf was going, I think, a little bit, which kind of ruined the, the momentum of him. And then Alcaraz got back into it. And then the third set was pretty disappointing um, from his perspective anyway. So, yeah, it was a good match from the like first half of it was great. And then the second half was a bit slower. And yeah, but it was it was good. Good. Uh, am I right in saying a lot of the uh, chat afterwards was that, you know, Sinner actually kind of fell off a bit of a cliff. It wasn't like, and it may have been because of, of Alcaraz um, and, you know, the pressure he was putting on him. Um, but I think, I mean, I, I listened to a lot of kind of tennis media, tennis podcasts, and, you know, and one of them it was, yeah, Sinner, Sinner's form just kind of dropped off uh, a, bit of a, a bit of a cliff. You know, he was netballing, he was going wide, a lot of unforced yeah. errors in the second and third set. I take it, you know, that was the, the, the tail of the tape. Yeah, I think so. And it, uh, he definitely had something uh, physically wrong with him because he just the, the the way he sort of went from in that first set to the to the end of the second, I, there has to have to be something. And he was stretching out his calf. He fell on his wrist on a point. I'm sure you've seen that point. Um, like he dived on that wrist, and that that yeah. like his forehand was not the same afterwards. So it was, um, yeah, it didn't look. It wasn't great from that point anyway. Okay, wow, well, right. So, um, so I wonder if that will uh, if there'll be any kind of. Oh, I, I, that's what I'm guessing. Anyway, I'm, he might have had some, you know, the pressure on from Alcaraz, obviously, but 
Yeah, that's what I assumed, because it was from that moment where it sort of went downhill a little bit for him. Oh, OK, OK, so it'll be interesting to see uh, where Sinner goes. Of course, this week they yeah. are number one and two seeds, mm -hmm. as opposed to the two and third, um, where they met so in the get a final. final. So we yeah. could get a final. Um, yeah. And, uh, of course, was it Sinner beat Alcaraz here last year, didn't he? He did, um, and that was a great match as well. Yeah, um, and then it was... Um, was it Medvedev then won the final? Am I right in saying Medvedev beat yes, Sinner in the final? Yeah, yeah. Um, so Medvedev is the defending champ. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So I mean, the, the conditions. Uh, a lot has been made of the conditions in Indian Wells. That it's a slower ball. Um, it's a you know slower, grainier ball, slower conditions, um, which suit the Alcaraz game. A little bit different here this week in terms of uh, Miami. It's a little bit faster. It's not the um, the kind of normal conditions. Um, do you expect to see those two again in the final? Um, and if so, um, f fingers crossed there isn't any rain and I can actually watch it this time. Um, but yeah, yeah exactly. Take it, take it all going well. I'm just having a look at the draw now. Um, Sinner will play uh, Vavasori in the first round, potentially Mikkelsen or Talon Griegspor, one of the yeah. players Murray's actually playing in the doubles right now. Um, he's in the same half as Tommy Paul Sinner. Um, so that one could be tricky. I don't see any other really issues. Tommy Paul playing well. Um, He's in the same half as Andy Murray, so you never know. But, well, uh, <laughs> we, we can dream. We can dream. We but, um, dream. <laughs> but I don't think, you know, given what happened in uh, in Melbourne, I don't see much. Uh, I mean, Echeverry just absolutely uh, steamrolled him. Good old Andy. And, um, he did, yeah. yeah. So I, 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 I fear for... For Sir Andy Munro Murray in that one, um, uh, as a, and just looking at the score and, and the stream that we're watching at the moment, we, we we've not talked too much about this one. Um, you've been keeping your eye on this, Greg. Um, looks like Dan Evans is under a little bit of pressure. Um, have we got a read on what's going on yet? Is, is there a story of this match so far? Um, do we have one player? You know, Sonigo got his eye in and he's driving forward. He's been the aggressor and he's putting pre uh, Evans under pressure. It's Evan. Um, you know, he's not even been broken serve yet, and I'm, I'm reading his, his, uh, his obituary, but, you know, his Evans maybe turned up and he's not playing too well. What's happening? Yeah, I've had sort of one eye when we were talking. So I think, yeah, Senegal's definitely been the better player. I mean, I think you're ahead of me on the, the stream. So, um, and I can see on the thing, it's Love 40. Um, but yeah, I think since that break point that, that Evans got, it's definitely been mostly Senegal and he's been... Um, hurting Evan's serve rather than the other way around. So I think he's putting the pressure on uh, early on. Uh, just to answer quickly, to deviate briefly away from tennis, um, I think producer John is being a little <laughs> bit cute there with that. Um, but um, what, what I will say, we, Scotland are playing the Netherlands um, tomorrow evening in, uh, in Amsterdam. Would you believe, Greg, and not that I don't love sitting with you on a Thursday night, but I was actually meant to be there. I had my flights all booked. Oh, yeah. oh, um, God. But then uh, in terms of childcare, um, basically my mother um, slipped and broke her wrist a couple of weeks ago. Um, she's okay, um, but she's in a cast, uh, which meant that she can no longer um, look after baby boy. So um, so I had to cancel. And would you believe, not to go off again at a tangent, see Ryan here, right? So I yeah. tried to I tried to contact them yesterday to say, listen, this is the situation. Mother broke wrist and can't look after baby anymore. Give me a give me a refund or a credit for another flight. They said no. I said all right. I said, well, can you cancel my booking, please? They said we don't cancel bookings. And I said, what do you mean you don't cancel bookings? They said we don't cancel bookings. I said, how do I tell them that I'm not turning up? And they said just don't turn up. <laughs> like, would you believe that? Right. So you're just instead of canceling with Ryanair, you're just told just don't go to the airport. So and when they do the last calls and stuff over the speaker, then you might not even be at the airport. Well, I think because you're, I wasn't checked in, though. So basically, I think oh, what okay. they do is because yeah. you're not checked in, they're just like, oh, right, cool, we don't have to worry about them because they've not actually checked in to come on this flight. So, yeah. But I just I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, now, no. uh, as we've been uh, talking travel, oh, and by the way, yeah, we're playing the Netherlands tomorrow, John, but there's more chance of Scotland winning that because I think uh, we're a good team and uh, Murray's got a bigger mountain to climb than that. Although we are playing Germany in match one, which will be amazing. Anyway, um, yes, Sonigo has a broken serve. So he is in the driving seat, certainly for this first set. Having a look there, um, he's actually made the most uh, unforced errors, but Sonigo got um, nine winners. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, he just he seems to be the, the one that's being the aggressor here. I remember Sonigo, um, it was a couple of years ago in the clay court season. I don't know 
when I remember. I think he had a really good r- run in a couple of tournaments like Rome and, and Madrid and Monte Carlo, where he was, you know, taking out the big seeds. Um, uh, certainly, I think he, he got all the way to playing Nadal in a semi final, um, and uh, and then so he's always been on my radar since then. Quite like mm. the guy. Can't get away from the fact that he looks like uh, Daniel's son out of the original Karate Kid. Um, and oh. uh, so, um, if you can't see the resemblance, then I don't know what my, what what movie you've watched. Um, but yeah, do you like Sonigo? What's your thoughts on on him in terms of like where he stands in the game? Yeah, I like Sonigo. Um, I think he's a great great player. Um, I did think he was younger than twenty eight because he's been around for that long. Um, but yeah, I don't. He just seems a bit hit and miss to me. Like he. He seems to have so much potential in him that he could do more and then just has has games where he's just off it um, and never gets too, too far. I mean, he's only won three titles. I thought he would have won more than that personally. Yeah. But um, yeah, he just seems like a very hit and miss player. Like when he's on it, he can be pretty much anyone. Um, but yeah, there's very rare times where he's on it, on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's very well put. I think uh, I don't think I could have put that any better myself. I think you're right. I think um, the guy uh, has got a top level, top game, um, uh, but uh, very, very rarely, um, you know, puts himself to maybe four or five matches uh, in a tournament in an event. I'm just trying to get his. I actually um, just I found the tournament that you're talking about. Uh, okay, what was it? That's what. That's exactly what, Greg. That's why I love doing this. The, the 2021 Italian Open. Uh-huh. Uh He beats Monfils and then a Italian wild card, and then Dominic Team when he was fourth in the world, Rublev mm-hmm. at seventh in the world. There you go. And Boom, then he's only lost in the semis to uh, Djokovic. Djokovic, well, maybe not too much knowledge because I said yeah. Nadal. <laughs> um, uh, who was who did Djokovic play in that final? Do we know? Nadal, and then Nadal won it. So you were right. There you go. <laughs> kind of right, half right. Okay, I'll take that as a win. Don't you worry. Um, was Monfils? Was by the way, was he? I take it he wasn't anyway seeded at all. 14th, 14th wow, seed. Right. Okay, yeah, cool. yeah, excellent. Yeah. Right. So there was three seeds that he took out. Yep. Yeah, I remember because I remember watching it. Um, and uh, and that was in Rome, wasn't it? Yeah, you said Rome. Yeah, yeah, Italian yeah. Open. Yeah, yeah, Rome. Brilliant. Um, yeah, and because he because I remember like the whole the whole crowd had the he had the backing of the crowd, obviously. So um, yeah. I'd love to. Do you know what? I, I'm starting to think I, I need to go to Italy and watch a tennis event because it seems like you know watching Turin yeah. last year. Um, you know, it just seemed like a, a really kind of you know, energized atmosphere, and uh, you so seem quite hostile though at times when they're against, so. when you're against the Italian uh, Italian player. They probably get, I think they can get quite hostile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think I think a lot of crazy. I mean, think about the French. Fair, yeah. Um, I, I, I remember. Do you remember Taylor Fritz last year? Um, and, that was great. Uh, I love that. Oh, I loved it. I absolutely <laughs> loved it. I think I tweeted at the time, like, uh, like when he was doing all that and, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, um, you know, I better not swear on this, but you know, in terms of. Um, I don't know how else to say it, but winding up the crowds, I was going to say like something housery. Um, yep. but uh, but yeah, in terms of like you know, players to do that, I tweeted a few weeks ago about um, Coratin Mute in, uh, in Chile. Did you see when he was he, he must have taken out like two or three Chilean players? Um, yeah, including he, sorry, go on. Sorry, yeah, he took out he took out a couple of Chilean and he Jari. was playing Jerry. Uh, and, and he was just winding up the crowd, wasn't it? Yeah, I think. Uh, the first, the first point of the match, he's he's serving and he does a, an underarm serve ace, <laughs> um, and then, and then basically, so he beats him and uh, and uh, and then he does this thing at the end of it. He goes, oh, uno minuto, uno minuto, um, and he, he tries to address the crowd, talking about like having respect um, for all players because <laughs> they work hard. But it's a total p take, like he's absolutely taking the piss, um, and. Uh, and I just, I just, I, like, I've never been a big fan of him. Obviously, Dan Evans, who we're watching, um, has had a couple of run-ins with him, I, I think, once yeah. at the, the US, um, another time, uh, I think, somewhere on clay. Um, so they two have had clashes together. So Muti, I think, is just a bam-up, um, as we say <laughs> up here. He just bams folk up. Um, anyway, Son- Sonigo, he's not bammed Sonigo up. Uh, sorry, Dan Evans hasn't bammed Sonigo up so far because Sonigo, um, on his way to this first set at the moment, um, uh, yeah, so Dan Evans, what, what, where can he where can he change it up a little bit? Does he need to maybe, you know, those first serves are 46%. He definitely needs to work on that, doesn't he? Yep, absolutely. Just get some first serves in and yeah, just get it's the it's that cliche, isn't it? Get it in more than your opponent does and just needs to do that right now. Just like work on like his backhand doesn't seem to be going firing as much as it us, usually does. 
that's kind of his weakness, I think, sometimes, is he's very inconsistent with that backhand sometimes. You know, when he won Washington, that backhand was unreal for all yeah. most of the games. But when he's when he's going out in these first rounds, it's it's mainly because the backhand just isn't firing at all. It's just, yeah, it's going out a, a lot. So I think if he can just sort of focus on getting that in, I think he'd be, be all right. Not in this set, probably, um, judging by how it's going so far. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm struggling to find his... Uh... His recent activity on the ATP website there because I was typing in Dan Evans um, and they, they would refer me to call him his Sunday name of Daniel. So um, eventually I found him. Um, okay, yeah, so he, he lost to Indian Wells to Safalin um, in the yeah. first round. Um, got beat 6-1 in the first set. Managed to pull that one back 7-5. Um, it looks like it's a similar kind of um, match we've got in the go here. I mean, I've just watched Sonigo, um, who is love 30. Um, but I've just watched oh, he's him. Won the last, he's won the last 13 of 15 points. So is that the graphic there. that just came up in the television? Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah okay. that's not good at all for Dan Evans. Yeah, I mean, Dan Evans just timed him, timed uh, coming to the net all wrong there um, because, I mean, Sonigo had the whole court to pick from. I think uh, he thought he was going down the line. He went cross court. Um, I'll talk us through this point now. Dan Evans serving down the tee, gets it in, returned by Sonigo. Dan Evans again back up to the net. Sonigo's went for the lob. It's, I think it's in. Uh, and it was in, uh, and Dan Evans has just gone wide. Um, got to say, um, I know I said I didn't want to read his obituary too early, um, yeah. but you know, uh, if this goes 5 1 and then possibly 6 1 for the set, might not be the, the epic three setter that we thought it would be, Greg. Um, yeah, but- yeah, yeah. I mean, well, we, I mean, we saw it in um, when he played Safoon in that he can just come back after a 6 1, which could happen here, but um. Yeah, it's not it's not good signs, is it? Um, like, and he just seems his body language is off, obviously, because he's losing like um, badly. So, um, yeah. He wow. Just, he, I think sorry. I'm a bit ahead of you. I think I'm yeah. a bit ahead of you. So, I just want you to watch here. How uh, have you seen this Sonigo winner? No, uh, it's right. love for it's love for you right. for me. Watch, 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 watch. Forehand. I can't believe that. The backhand, Sonego cross court. Oh my, that's yeah, that's amazing. That's an amazing shot, especially to break as well. To break, Sam. I think they. I think break. they both thought it was it was a. Uh, it was wide. Um, so serving for the set now. Um, producer John has changed up the scoreboard. They must not have liked the the, the, the TNNS one. <laughs> um, so we are on a, a Google scoreboard five one. Uh, to Sonigo, we are going to have a set of what um, roughly about 26 or 7 minutes um, so yeah, it's been fairly comfortable, I've got to be honest, just looking at the, the points that I've seen Dan Evans he looks a little bit out of sorts for me, just a little bit out of yeah. form, a little bit out of confidence as well, like you know, like you bit. say, the backhand in Washington um, Dan Evans was going toe to toe with some of the better players in the on the ATP, and he was uh, he was outmanoeuvring them with that backhand, especially when it was coming on the rise, and he was catching it nice and early, um, and he was finding his length, wasn't he? I mean, he was finding line yeah. balls, he was finding it right deep into into the court. Um, that was the uh, that was what what won him through. Um, fairly certain that his very next event, I think he lost in the first round. Um, I think so. so um, but yeah, anyway, this year, um, surprised he was a, he was a set up in Ben Shelton and Acapulco. I'm just looking at that. I didn't know he won at six two. That was two breaks in that first set. Of course, Shelton then came back. He lost to uh, Thanasi Kokinakis and Los Cabos, uh, Jordan Thompson. I mean, they're all. I mean, all the players that he's losing to. Um, let's be honest, uh, they, they they are decent tour players. You know what I mean? It's. Yep. Uh, Public yeah. in, in Adelaide, Sonigo in Australia, Jordan Thompson, of course, an ATP winner this year. Um, Kokinakis, you know, solid player. Uh, Shelton on the rise, Safflin. Um, it's not like you, you're seeing him getting beat off any kind of wild card, lucky losers. Who are they kind of players? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I suppose, um, I suppose that's maybe where he goes, you know what, uh, when, when he sits down with his team and he says, like, where do we go from here? Maybe that's what they're telling him. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't think he's the sort of player to be complacent when going into a match, like you know, against maybe a lower ranked player or someone he's he's beaten before or anything like that. So I don't know what it is, but um, yeah, he might just it might just be a mental aspect of oh, I should win this, and when it doesn't, it goes against him in his head, and he gets in his head, and he doesn't play very well. But um, yeah, I think he's a very momentum player, isn't he? If he gets two games in a row on the board, he'll 
he hopefully will do much better than he's doing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you want some uh, British good news, then Murray just won their doubles match. So there you go. Two. Go on, Andy. Um, well done, Andrew Murray. Um, I like that. I like that. I wonder, is, is Jamie Murray's not in this, though, isn't he? He's, 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 he's not playing he, in the. I don't actually know. I will double check for you, but I don't think so. Well, John, thanks for noticing. But yes, I, uh, I did go for a trim today. Um, so thanks very much, John. You're making me blush. Um, I, 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 yes, he's <laughs> um, not. He's not. So, no. is there a, 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 have Andy and Jamie ever faced each other across the net? John will know that. They must have done, right? John will know that. John, um, have Andy or anyone out there, you know, there's nearly a hundred people watching the stream right now. Um, have Andy and Jamie ever faced each other? across the net. I don't think they can in any, in any case, but um should Andy, you know, play more doubles. Maybe I mean it's going to be for Andy and Jamie, isn't it? Um I suppose um for 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 the Olympics. Sonigo takes the first yeah. set 6-1 in 31 minutes. Um that is considering after three games they played 12 minutes of tennis. Um that's a pretty resounding. Um there we go, John. There, there you we go. go. There you go. Never lets me down that boy. Never lets me down. He's a great wee boy that boy, John. Um, what year was that? 2019. 2019, was it that soon? Wow. Yeah. I would have thought it'd been like their like start of their careers, maybe, or something like that, you know? Have you, but, I take it you've, uh, have you heard, I mean, it's not just a Scottish thing, have you heard of, it, of Duncan Murray, yeah? I think so. I've heard, I recognise the name, yeah. So it's the, it's the other Mur Murray br brother, and it's basically, it's like a comedy sketch up here in Scotland. That um, that Judy Murray is part of is a guy called Chris Forbes, who um, is quite a, a kind of well-known comedian up in Scotland, mm. and they created this like at first it was just like a kind of online parody, and it was it's basically called the Other Murray Brother. I think I've and seen it on it, Twitter. Yeah. Well, they've made up this Duncan for uh, Duncan Murray, um, <laughs> and he's he's not real, and uh, and they do all these like there you go they do shows across the country. Um, and Judy Murray's part of it, and she's like hilarious, and she's really good at like acting as if he's basically the forgotten brother, like the kind of black sheep of the family, <laughs> um, who uh, who's been forgotten, but uh, who's nobody likes. Not Andy, Judy, and Jamie do not like um, because he's not very talented, um, but very <laughs> funny. If you can ever see any of this stuff on YouTube, um, I yeah, would I'll fully, definitely have a look after this. Yeah, fully encourage you to do so. Um, okay, so where we're at is. Uh, we are six one. The players are now coming out for uh, the second so, set. So Sonego uh, had ninety three percent first serves in in that in that uh, match. I think it was first or second serves in. But anyway, he's serving fantastically well. So yeah, yeah. it's going to be difficult for him to carry. If he carries on that level, it's going to be difficult for Dan Evans. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a, it's a, an obvious big strength of uh, Sonego is his. Um, as he served, yeah, it's uh, it's a well known uh, strength of his game. I'm just I'm padding a little bit here because um, I have been watching this. So again, little secret: the way that I'm doing this stream today is through a betting app, um, but it's draining my phone battery. So I'm thinking, what I'll just do is I'll just go log into the betting app online and then watch it from from the screen because uh, allow me. But again, that's how I think that's by the way that's how my stream's always a little bit ahead of you because you know. Yes. They yeah. stream it because people are betting on it live. So mm. they stream it as live as it's happening. It's so as live, like, yeah. I sometimes watch football matches on it and it's pretty good for that. Yeah, because obviously people are wanting to bet as they're watching it. And that, yes. that's the whole point, isn't it? So um, anyway, so what, if you, do you want to talk us through a couple of points, Greg? Is that all right? Yeah, first, uh, um, first point, Evans. Um, I think it was just a serve, then a forehand, then uh, Senego hit a backhand out in, in the line. So... Yeah, simple point to start off, but that's exactly what Evans needs. Um, going up for his second, well, first serve of the second point. And okay, right, I think I've got the stream up and running. In the net, so it'll be second serve. He still can't get that first serve in. So um, just to, to deviate a little bit, um, I noticed a couple of things on Twitter because I know that you're a big Liverpool fan, Greg. Um, I, am, yeah. I, I yeah. told you in the past that I um, favour as my English team, as we say up here. Um, mm -hmm. 
Liverpool. Um, so it was a tough watch on Sunday, especially that uh, the last part of that match. And I know that oh, John was uh, yeah. was reveling. <laughs> there we go. There, <laughs> there he is. There's, uh, there's John. He didn't let us uh, forget that. I was uh, getting a couple of digs my way. Um, so yeah, tough, tough one uh, for Liverpool. Um, Jurgen going off at a Danish commentator. Did you see that? I did see that. Yeah. Um, I don't think he meant it as people took it. He meant it. Yeah, I think he was talking about his did. like. Yeah, even the journalist said no. He didn't even mean it like that. But yeah, 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 yeah. But it's, of course, people are gonna <laughs> make fun of him because it's young Klopp. So uh, they're just they're just jealous of him, really. Absolutely, right? couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. John's <laughs> laughing. John's howling in the background. As our manager, so um, yeah. John, John's howling in the background. So anyway, let's get back <laughs> to the terrace. Right. So Dan Evans, uh, it's on the Sonogo serve. Oh no, it's not on the Sonogo serve. Um, he is 40 15 on his own self. Yeah, he needs a strong start in this second set, doesn't he? He, does. he can't let this this match fade away from him. Um, nope. uh, and he needs to be competitive. He just wasn't in that ma- in that first set. Um, so he's coming into the net there. He's went for a, a, a volley. Again, his timing of when he's coming into the net just seems a little bit off to me. He's a great volleyer, Dan Evans. Um, uh, but yeah, I just I didn't like the the ball was at his feet. He did a wee half volley pick up. Um, and Sonigo picked him off. Uh, so we're at 40 30. He's not there yet in terms of getting himself a mark on the second set scoreboard. Um, I'll talk us through this one just to keep us up to date and make sure that we're filling our mundane chat with a plenty of tennis content. Um, first serve was in. Okay. Um, I don't know if Sonigo knew that was in because he seemed to be walking back to his till. But anyway, Dan Evans gets the first game of the second set. Um, Again, uh, let's talk about uh, the bee invasion of Indian Wales. Um, <laughs> yeah. Again, I saw your tweets. Um, I was tweeting about it at the same time and you came <laughs> up my timeline. Have you ever... Seen, I mean, I'll give you an example. I work in an office which, I, which is a news office and they have obviously TVs everywhere. So I don't usually watch the news, but Sky News was on and Sky News the next day had... The bee invasion as one of their like top stories. Um yeah. and I'm thinking to myself, watching going, I watched that live. Like half these people in this office never usually watch this, and now they're yep. getting to see yeah. all these bees, and they're all talking about did you see that? And I'm like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, I got that too from friends, yeah. <laughs> so I so I mean, amazing the quality how this guy, this this guy who's the the, the guy who kills the bees, I don't know what oh, you call him, the beekeeper. What was it? John oh, something. His name? Yeah, he just looks yeah, so rock star. He just like just it was great. Came in, it was great. <laughs> no B suit, um, shades, like signing autographs, taking selfies with Lance Davis. Where did I get John from? Maybe I've got John in the brain. Um, Lance Davis, but he's doing interviews on like you know CBS in America, CNN, all that. He's 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 all over the world. This guy, he's, he's going to be the oh, celebrity he's... big brother next. I bet. He... Yeah, I wanted his picture more than I did the tennis players. Honestly, if I was there. <laughs> I'd want his, yeah. I'd want his picture and everything. Do you see, like when he was walking back, people were just getting his picture with him, and he was just look, he looked yeah, like he was a comfortable just... man in the stadium. <laughs> At one point, he goes up the he goes up the stadium stairs, walks along, and then comes back down the other side of the court. And you're just wondering yeah. why didn't you just walk for there? I to think there. I think he secretly knew what he was doing. He was like well, getting the, as much camera footage as I can. <laughs> is that Jamie Fox? He's with. He's um, quite a celeb- I think he's a celebrity. Well, is he? Or is um, this because of his his newfound no, fame? I think he was. I think he like has a YouTube channel and stuff that he does stuff on. Ah, because I, I was going to ask. I mean, I wonder how many like millions his Instagram or Twitter followers. How much? They oh, I imagine his by. followers gone up by. Yeah, but I think it wasn't too bad before it started. Anyway, but yeah, the fact yeah. he was doing it with no protective gear on or anything like that, it was just it was a it was immense. Just so <laughs> laid back, like so child, so California dreaming. This guy, like he was a beach boy, just chilling out. <laughs> On you go, fella. Um, loved it, loved it. Um, and uh, and yeah, do you know what? Again, all settled to watch that match. Um, and yeah. you know, just again because of the the B invasion, we managed to catch a bit of it. Um, and then well, that was that match was again was a bit of a disappointment from his various point of view. Anyway, he didn't really turn up. Well, good. Uh, I don't mind that because uh, <laughs> because it's where I was knocked my boy Carly Toss off a couple of times, um, and I started to worry about that matchup, uh, especially after Melbourne. Um, I mean, I watched the uh, I watched Carlos against Marishan um, because I just thought it was an interesting matchup. Marishan obviously famously beat him in Rome last year, um, yep. and uh, when he was flying, 
Um, and so I just wondered, I just wondered if maybe this guy maybe had that because I know that tennis, oh, what I've learned, yeah. what I've learned about tennis, you know, over the last few years and really trying to get myself up to speed in it is it's completely a, a sport for matchups, you know, where one guy can just beat the other guy, you know, 17 times and then can't beat this other guy who can beat the guy who beats him 17. You know, it's just all about styles <laughs> and matchups. And, um, and so I just wondered if the Marishan match. Uh, match up maybe was was maybe Carlos is like kryptonite. However, watching that, I was going to tweet at the time, going, "Is this the best that Carlos Alcaraz has played?" You know, tw- since Wimbledon, basically, um, because yeah. I, I just, I, but I, did, I just liked the way that he was moving about the court, and uh, and then I think I think I might Damien might have said, "Yeah," but the you know the, the conditions favour him, kind of thing, as if that's taken that's away. But I just, yeah, but I just I just saw that that this guy, this kid's back, and you know he defends his title. Um, I think uh, at the start of the, the fortnight, I don't think many people. I know that, um, and I, I know that, that you've got Carlos, you know, fanboys as well. But I think at the start of the week, he probably started that third favourite. Would you not have said? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I maybe would have even put him lower down than that. He just wasn't in the right. Like I was thinking, Medvedev, uh, Sina Djokovic as my three to win that tournament. Um, so when he when like Djokovic went out early and and Alcaraz actually won it, I was very shocked. But yeah, I forgot how much the the conditions favour him and you know how well he just stormed through people like they were nothing. So yeah, yeah, fair play. Yeah. <laughs> uh, to go off a bit of a tangent, just on the back of uh, of Matthew's conspiracy theory, do you ever follow golf at all, Greg? I don't know. No. It's one of the few okay. sports well, I don't I'll, follow. I'll, actually, I'll be lost <laughs> on you. I heard a, a golfing conspiracy theory today, um, and it just it. I just love all that conspiracy theory stuff. Not in terms of like I'm somebody who is a conspiracy theorist, but I just I think I find it interesting how some people can like you know go down the rabbit hole with these things and go right. Um, that must mean that, like for instance, the golf one is basically the, basically they had this big event called the Players Tournament. It's, it's sometimes classed as the fifth major or the fifth, like effectively the fifth Grand Slam of golf kind of thing. Um, and they, they were basically saying that the winning score was twenty under. But the the all time course or the all time score record for that event is twenty four under, but it's held by Greg Norman, who is basically on the Live Tour, which is the Saudi Arabian golfing tour. So yeah. what the conspiracy theory was, it, the course was set up by the organisers to try and um, get that score of twenty four under, like beaten, so that he no mm. longer held the record. Because Greg Norman's basically not liked by people <sighs> in the PGA Tour anymore. Um, okay. And I just I just when I saw Matthew talking about the B Killer actually um, doing that to get repeat business, why not? Why not? Um, you've got to do it yourself to put bread on the table. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Um, yeah. Danny Evans definitely playing a lot better. Um, uh, he uh, putting a bit of pressure on the Sonigo serve now, but it does. Um, but I've seen a couple of winners during this game, and I didn't see any. Um, yeah, yeah, barely any. Yeah. Carl, that's interesting, Matthew. Uh, Carlos is going to take some stopping this clay season. Um, I agree. I think um, for me, uh, even before all the troubles of, of the start of the year for him, uh, I always said the natural progression for him was to win uh, the French this year. He's uh, he's definitely my hot tip, even well before Indian Wells. Um, and this goes back to, um, I think there's a few of us in talking tennis going back to the French semi-final as well. Um, you know, he uh, he split opinion whether or not he was going to win that Djokovic match that he cramped up in the semi-final. For me, he yeah. was. For others, uh, I Jack, he wasn't. I think he, he said that even though he won the second set, Djokovic was was playing the better tennis, which I didn't agree with. But my point is, um, yeah, Clay is his, uh, you know, it's where he broke on, where he beat Djokovic, he beat Nadal in the same event, he beat Zverev a few times on Clay, um, won Madrid. You know, this is where he really kind of burst onto the scene and I think he's going to have a real run at this Clay season. And uh, yeah, I just wondered what you thought on on uh, your French and, and Alcaraz and the clay, as as Matthew points out. Yeah, I mean, I don't know whether I just kind of need to see the clay season start and then I can make a proper decision because it's like yeah. it's because he, I mean, he got to a semi final of a tournament, didn't he, and got lost to Jerry in in a, in a tight match. To be fair, but he still lost, so it's like yeah. If he won a title on clay before the before the season, uh, before this, like um, Indian Wells, etc. Well, Dan Evans is broken, by the way, um, which is good. Um, if he had won a title, I think I would have backed him more. But I just want to see him. Obviously, he can go and win like Rome and stuff and prove me wrong. But I think, yeah, I want to see him play a bit better on clay than he did earlier on in the season. Um, 
I think that again, just going back to that though, the yeah. clay for that, I think Nico Jarry, he's a tall man with a big serve. The ball's very yeah, high when definitely. it comes to him. Uh, I don't think he likes that matchup in terms of like that's why he struggles against Sverev sometimes. Sverev's yeah. a big man, he's got a big wingspan. Um, when the, the ball is coming to Alcaraz, um, it's going to be quite high up on him. And I think he gets carried away instead of trying to be patient and uh, and you know wait to, to kind of time the ball correctly. I think he gets caught up in trying to go for the winners. I watched that Jarry match. Um, and believe it or not, like you know, Alcaraz wasn't great in that match, but he still had moments where you were just like, wow, this this kid. Do you know what I mean? Like there was a, I'm sure there was a, a drive volley lob or some something like that that, that I can remember just going, Jesus, this guy. Um, but he didn't play well. Um, uh, and so, yes, uh, I just I think that I just that that kind of goes back to my point ten minutes ago about matchups yes. for certain players. And I do, I just think, and also I mean, funnily enough, I mean, it was a home crowd. Well, no, it wasn't. It was in Buenos Aires, wasn't it? Or no, it was in Rio. Um, or it was Rio. It was Ah, it was when it is that when it was real when he, he, he rolled the ankle when yeah, yeah, yeah. there, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, Nico Jaro was Jari was the kind of bad guy, that's what it was. He was the enemy, and the crowd were against him because they were all <laughs> loving Kalitos. Funnily enough, I mean, it's it's in the news right now. Have you managed to check out any of this? You know, the the kind of big news that's ongoing about the the, the future of the the ATP and the WTA tours. Have you, you managed to, to to you know form an opinion or, or or read up about it at all, Greg? I've not really read up too much about it. Um, I just I saw Murray's interview that he did. I'm sure you, you will have seen that or or not and on Sky with I think Laura Robson, and he just saying that it's good if ATP and WTA merge, which I think's yeah I think it's great. I think it, that'll be do great things for the sport. But it's if they set up a different one and all the top players go into that like they do in golf, as you mentioned, that'll be bad. Um, but I just don't know enough about it to comment really but those are the two things that i you know i want the atp or wta merger to happen i think that'd be great i just don't want all the top players to go off and sit in yeah. saudi on their own and and you know compete in another another league let's say yeah no um absolutely um i'll i'll, I'll kind of break it down we'll, we'll we'll comment on a couple of the points like you say dan evans really making a fight of us now um yeah. in the second set um, I just wanted to say hello to Jake as well, Jake, uh, a big follower of Talking Tennis, always a uh, somebody who encourages us all, Greg, so um, if you haven't encountered Jake before. Oh, um, I have, yep. yep. You have, good man, good man, yeah, yeah Jake, yeah. A, a good lad. Um, Jake, you can tell me about your team at, uh, at the Rugbers, at the Rugby, uh, I don't think, uh, I think the, the Welsh didn't do too well. Um, and uh, and that Six Nations, neither did Scotland really. We, I think we could beat a few times. Um, uh, but yes, um, Jake, pleased to, to see you or, or pleased to have you on board tonight. Um, plenty of people on board tonight, so just make sure you like and hit subscribe. Let's keep growing this channel. Um, not even two years old, um, and always, um, you know, not stopping. Um, neither is Dan Evans, he's got two game points, uh, for the uh, a three love lead. Um, so I will uh, take us through this one. Um, yeah, definitely, certainly um, changed it up a little bit. Maybe it's Sonego. Maybe he's just uh, he's maybe <clears throat> took his foot off the gas a little bit. As I say that, Dan Evans, uh, commentator's cuss, throws in a double fault. So we're at 40-30. Oh, I was just about to say, playing so much so much better. And in the rallies, the he's serve, looking more assured and everything. But yeah, the serve's still iffy. It would, it would <laughs> it just be my luck going to serve it a lot better and then yeah, throwing yeah. in a double, a double fault. <laughs> it's funny when you watch tennis, I mean, even like, you know, these are professional commentators. They all do it. They all do it. They go, oh, oh yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Djokovic is playing out his skin here, he can't be beaten, and then he'll throw in a couple of netballs. Uh, you, you know, many times I watch it and go, Shouldn't I said that, mate? No, you um, <laughs> right, so the players are rallying uh, where they currently stand, both uh, at the ad court. Now they're in the middle of the court. Forehand by Dan Evans goes deep, uh, so deep that um, Sonigo can't get any purchase on it, and he goes, he goes long. So uh, John telling us all that he is having a beer. Also, um, bigging up the Esterol Clay Court Tournament. That's because he always goes. Um, so he's uh, he's basically been biased there. Um, and uh, and yes. Yeah, so right, where are where, where are we? Yes, right. So the tours. I was reading a Sports Illustrated article today. Uh, listen to me trying to um, you know, pretend that I'm an educated fellow who does my research. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, really interesting. Um, it was uh, your man, 
from the USTA um, from uh, Lou Scher, right? So he was in an interview with tennis journalist John Vertheim, um, and he was talking about this tour. And what he's saying is that 80% of tennis, right? Basically, 80% of tennis is the, the, the money that is made in tennis is only um, focused on 80% of the event. So what that means is it's the Grand Slams, and like four or five other Masters events that he says that tennis fans only, even tennis fans only watch like, you know, the Grand Slams. He says 70% of tennis fans only watch the Grand Slams. Now, don't know where he's getting this research from. And, you know, John Vertheim, he does push back. Um, but what he is proposing, what uh, uh, Lewis Sher, who uh, is in cahoots with obviously the other three Slams, um, particularly Tylee from, uh, from Australia, Tennis Australia, so what they're saying is this new tour would be uh, 96 player draws. The WTA and the ATP would merge. It would be equal uh, pay, equal prize funds. Um, uh, the events would be four majors and then 10 other events. Um, and that would be men and women, equal prize money, all held outdoors. Um, there's also going to be uh, a week uh, off and a week a week off before and after the majors um, and a minimum of two month off season. Um, and they're basically trying to make it like the PGA Tour that we talked about in golf, mm. you know, like the PGA Tour, it's only the best players who are on the tour who qualify for the best events. Um, underneath it, between 101 and 300 in the ranking, there'll be this contender tour. Um, but it just begs the question, like, you know, where, what about all these, like, Dallas has put loads of money into their, fa- to their 500 yeah. there. Um, where do all these other events? I mean, what he quotes and says is, uh, and I, I thought this was really interesting, he says, this is Lewis Sher of the USTA, so, um, we're the fourth most popular sport in the world, but 70% of those fans are only watching four events during the year. Um, fans have a hard time following the narrative when there's too many. When there's, so when the, basically what he's saying, why is he says, why is Sinner playing in Rotterdam and Alcaraz is somewhere in South America? So what he's saying is like, what, there's too many events. Tennis fans can't follow who, what's going on, who's to follow, what match to watch, and they just want to streamline it and focus it. Um. What else does he say? Bah, 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 bah. Uh, yeah, 10 tournaments out of roughly 100. So there's 140 tournaments at the moment, and he's wanting to condense that into 10 tournaments for the top, you know, 100, top 96 players. Yeah. So for me, it takes stuff like Nardi beating Djokovic last week wouldn't have happened. Yes. Okay, because he's 123 in the world. So he wouldn't have been on the tour to play that. And Marajan beating Alcaraz wouldn't have happened. Marajan playing. So you say. Yeah. it's almost like the Super League in tennis, you know, the proposed Super League that was in football yeah. that had a big yeah. outcry, there was no kind of relegation or promotion. Now, I think there will be an element of relegation and promotion. I don't know the, the logistics right now of how it's going to work, but basically I think the contender tour is just that you're contending to get onto the premium tour. Yeah. Um, I just think if you are, say, 80 in the world, you're playing these 10 events, so you're in this tour, you're playing these 10 events and you're playing the four Grand Slams. If you're 80 or even from 70 to 96 in the world, every week you're going to be playing a top seed or you're going to be playing a seeded player more, more, more often than not in the first two first two rounds. Yeah. So if you get knocked out, which is going to happen, you know, eight to nine times out of 10, you're not going to have a lot of tennis to play. It's because true. you Because you're... So unless they basically get knocked out in the first couple of rounds and then drop down onto the contender tour, I don't know what the logistics are. It's going to absolutely change the sport of tennis. And then obviously on the other side of the net, that's one offer on the other side of the net. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just got distracted by John. Are you locked out of the premium tour for a whole year? Yes, I think so. That's what I'm saying. I think oh my, yeah, really? it's, yeah, it's 96 players for the whole year and the whole yeah. season is four majors, 10 events, a week off before, a week off after. There's going to be a grass event in it, which is the lead up to Wimbledon. Yep. They're, they're all outdoors, so the indoor season or the indoor calendar gets completely scrapped. There is no indoor events, which you know Felix Auger Ali seems not going to like. Nope. Um, so, I mean, I, I I just don't understand why we have to change tennis so radically. I just don't. no. I, I like elements of that, like maybe the week off week off before Grand Slams might be good. Maybe less tournaments might be good for people following it. But why do we have to change the challenges system? that works so well as you say it just works on ranking points and, and ranking gets you into the, these tournaments like the masters and we wouldn't have people coming up for qualifying um all these young italians that are coming through wouldn't be we wouldn't notice them because they wouldn't be on the premier the premium tour and they'd only be on the, the challenger tour um 
or whatever the contender tour, which is a, a worse name anyway. Um, I'll put, so uh, I'll put I just, a link yeah, into the it. article. Um, I don't know if this will work, but I'm going to put it into the comments. I don't know if that works, but uh, yeah, if anyone would like to read the article, um, yeah, that's the alternative to Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Arabia have got the $2 billion offer um, for the WTA and the ATP. Um, and then this this offer is the, is the counter offer effectively. And it's basically saying that this will take the economic value of tennis to one billion. So again, rightly, John John goes and asks, well, if they're offering two billion, um, why would why would the tennis world not just go with a two billion dollar offer? But he's trying to say this is to stave off the kind of sports washing element of it. Um, Craig, uh, well, Tyler basically, but he. Um, He's dead against because he's he's tennis Australia and the Saudi Arabian money is going to basically mean that there's going to be a, a Masters 1000 event in the first week of the season, which then messes up, disrupts the whole build up to the, the Australian Open. So yeah. this is what he that this is basically what the point is. He is he, it's, it's, it's basically known that he's went to the other three slams and said this is what we need to do to to you know get rid of the Saudis effectively. But it's all down to the fact that he doesn't want his Tennis Australia season messed up. So he's yeah. gone to the other three slams. He's convinced them to follow him. Um, I suppose it's going to, he's probably said this is going to be, this is us taking control of the tour rather than it becoming like a live situation in golf. Um, so it's going to be really interesting where it goes. I, I hope I've explained it for, there's there's a hundred and over a hundred people on this. I'm sure I maybe got some parts of that wrong, but that's uh, the, the the link to the article that I read in Sports Illustrated. I would urge anyone to uh, read about it because it is of the future of this sport, um, and you know it will it will likely one way or another. The the, the plan is for 2026, the first of January 2026. If this is is the way that, that, that it goes, uh, this will this will be yeah that it'll from so we'll basically we've got 18 months left of tennis as we know it, and then it changes you know pretty much forever until. Um, and an, an interesting point as well: that the Saudis have made two, uh, have made an offer of two billion, right? The the Saudis have got a, a you know unlimited amount of money. What's to stop them from coming back and going? Okay, well here's four billion, well, here's six yeah, billion. Yeah. Like so, they'll just up, they'll just keep up in the offer. Um, yeah. So I just think it's a really interesting time of for the sport. I know that I've spoken for like ten minutes. I can even tell it myself because uh, my mouth is all dry. So tell <laughs> me what's going on in the tennis. Well, I've been trying to keep up and concentrate on what you're doing. You did a really great job about explaining that, by the way, because I yeah I didn't know about that beforehand. So yeah, listening to that was pretty good. Um, but yeah, I just I just don't know why they want to change it. Like, what's what's wrong with it? Like, maybe change elements here and there, but it, yeah. you know it works. I get that he wants more people to go and watch the sport, but um, surely there's better ways of doing it than just you know, flying money about and changing the, yeah. the sport entirely. Like why, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it sort of thing, you know. Stinks of very rich men or very much, yes. very rich men and women just wanting to get yeah. richer. Um, it stinks and... of the Super League and I hated that for football and I ha- and yeah. I don't like the sound of what you, of what you just said for, for tennis. So, I'm so glad that's nothing, the premium nothing's tour. confirmed, um, right? Is that just... Nothing's confirmed, just, no. I mean, yeah, I think yeah, there, yeah. Is, there is deadline dates, um, but... Um, but yeah, I think that, I think this will have a, a bit to go. But um, yeah, yeah, I think this was uh, initially broken by Simon Briggs at the Telegraph, um, mm. and then uh, John Verheim has went and got you know the USTA guy because he's an American journalist. I'm sure he has a relationship with him um, in terms of you know aligning into him, um, and uh, he's the chief exec of the USTA, Lewis Share, uh, and they sat down and did an interview. So it's all in that article. Uh, back to on court at the moment. Dan Evans, 4-1 up. Uh, Sonny goes serving, new balls. Um, uh, but yeah, Dan Evans looks like he is going to level this up, uh, certainly is the way it's going so far. Having yep. a look at uh, some of the statage, um, what we got, we have uh, Dan Evans certainly put his first serve percentage or first serve win, like point percentage up here. Um, it's, it's verging on 60% from the stats that I can see. Um Strangely enough, Sonic was still the favourite for, for this match. Um, uh, so uh, bookmakers may be thinking that, um, that Dan Evans might run out a bit of steam. But it yeah, happened can, against Sutherland, can... didn't it? So, it's it he, he, yeah, he won six. He, he lost it 6-1, then he won 
and then yeah lost it again so I wouldn't blame them for going against Dan Evans here but it just it's all about how he finishes this I guess Absolutely. Did you watch any of the Arnaldi Atherfis match last night? I went to die. I didn't. I was asleep. I think. I think. Yeah, I, I think me too. In. But I, yeah, was that a shock to you or you know Fis? Me, I think. Oh, that's that was the match that we did together, wasn't it? Fonseca. Oh, that was the match. Fis Fonseca. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was yeah, the one. Yeah. That was, that wasn't even no, Dubai, was it? It was. It was no, no. Uh, I don't know why I thought Dubai. Maybe it was after Dubai. Maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, that I don't know whether that shocked me or not. Um, because Arnaldi's another talented Italian youngster. I mean, they're just pumping them out like they're nothing, you know. Italian you know, tennis, by the way. Yeah. Um, I wish I was Italian now for, for so many reasons, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that didn't really shock me. I think the straight sets maybe would have shocked me a little bit, but I wouldn't have bet, you know, on Feast winning that match basically. So, in the form that he's in at the moment, it's very choppy, and yeah. you know, he, he could he could lose any time he. You know, it feels like it's very hit and miss at the moment. So, yeah, it didn't really shock me too much. Did it shock you? Um, no, and it probably should have. If uh, so, yeah, very much yeah. yourself. Like, uh, yeah. I think I was going to try and stay up and watch it, and then I thought, you know what, I just want to get an early <laughs> night, and um, and so. Yeah, so I, I went to my bed knowing that it was happening. It was, I mean, it was happening about 11 o'clock at night last night. So um, so when I woke up, but no, I just was like, oh, there we go. Okay, cool. I thought it was a very, it was a lot more evenly matched than I would have said it would have been um, maybe six months ago. Um, yeah. So, um, Sonigo, um, fist pump at the moment. Um, 30 15, uh, we just put away a winner there, um, right into, oh no, was it a winner? Yes, it was a volley. Volley winner. We'll go with that. Um, so, yes. Um, so, Sonigo 30-15 up. Really needs to to get back uh, this game at least um, to make sure that Dan Evans doesn't think um, it's uh, it's already in the third set. So, he serves. Um, sliced backhand. He comes into the net. Uh, it's a lovely drop shot and he makes it. Well played, Lorenzo at Sonigo. Um, made Dan Evans run. And, uh, yeah, he's taking the point 40-15. Um, Matthew, Saudis are idiots when it comes to spending money, paying John Ryan 500 million. And if they pay uh, Liverpool 150 million for Salah, it says it all. Uh, Salah, quickly, Salah going this summer? I don't think so, but maybe that's my heart controlling my head a little bit there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he'd be a hard man to replace, one of the best ever, isn't he? Um, yep. Okay, what else is going on? I'm just having a look at scores. Elsewhere, Alexander Miller and uh, Quan for all in the first. Uh, Rusevuri uh, two one uh, on the Hampman serve at the moment. Uh, where else are we? Let's look at the ladies. Madison Keys five two up. Uh, Ostapenko, Lara Siegman. That will be good. Is Lara Siegman, not the one that like bammed up. Who was she? She was pure winding up, and they all hated her at Wimbledon. Uh, oh, it's totally. And she won, did she know? I she basically remember. she was in the was other it, season. Was it, was it last year? Was it? I think so. I think it won within last year. First round, she uh, she was on the wind up. You know, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look this up. Um, oh, uh, just in the process of doing that because that's gonna just do Lara Siegmund Wimbledon. I, I may be making up the event. I don't know. Oh, she wasn't even at Wimbledon. Oh, there we go. I made up the event. It was, I was definitely an event that I've watched. Maybe I, I know what it was. It was the it was the, the US Open. Try US Open because right. I think it might have been Serena or Venus or maybe somebody somebody really really and she, the all the crowd were booing her. It might have been Coco Golf, was it? She lost she, the match. She lost the she match. Lost the match. Did, did it go to three sets? Yes, it did. Yeah, she won the first one. Yeah, she she was winding them up and all that, like taking ages between points, getting time violations. That was it. And she was getting booed by the crowd and stuff. Well, that worked for her because Coco Goff went up and won the won the tournament. So yeah, I commentated <laughs> on that. that um, I commentated on that uh, match um, against Sabalenka, the final. And uh, honestly, man, it was, it was good, man. Me and myself and Nick, um, but we, we both just went into it. We didn't think she was she was going to win it, but fair play to her. Like you know, start of it. Um, now I'm now Matthew. You're you're. Putting me at risk of uh, of some of definitely saying this guy's name uh, incorrectly, and I hate it when I do this because I feel like I'm insulting people. Um, Greg, I'm going to try this, and then you're going to try it for after me. So what yeah, I say okay. is, 
Yun Yun Shen Zhang. Am I saying Yun Shen Yun Shen Shang? I don't know. Am I, yeah, I think you, it was you, like Yun Yun Shen Shan. I think that. Yeah. You're right. Or Yun Shen Shang, maybe. I think we can I go with Shang. We can go with Shang. <laughs> I I don't know. Srahari, how are we doing? Um, uh, mate, how you doing? Uh I, I've got to be honest, I don't know tons about him. I know that um, he's a, I watched a couple of parts of his match. I know that um, I did watch I, I watched parts of him against Bublik in the Indian Wales, but who, who was he playing um, that he was on the TV? Was it last I night? Catch in the that first was round. It. That was it. Yeah, uh, I watched that. I watched that tie break. That was it. That was one, it. two tie breaks. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. good effort from him. Um, yeah, really good. Um, I think you know, um, I think he could be a player, you know. the, the, the I think definitely that, his winners count was something. Was that was that Martin Dam or was that uh, what's his name? The boy Dam, Mark Dam. Who's the other teenager? The American kid who won last Yeah, night? Dam, Dam. I think that ring that rings a bell with me. Yeah. Um, was it Blanche? No, no, it wasn't Blanche. That was a wild card. Um, right, hold on, Maximilian Dam. Is that who I'm looking for? Anyway, he won last night, and but he won two two tiebreakers. But I think uh, Shang was his winner counting up here off the scale against Kingmanovich. I think he'd. Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't look at the stats, but I yeah, I know he played very very well in both those tiebreaks. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Matthew. I don't know uh, what your thoughts are. I don't really have too many uh, tons of thoughts on him right now. I don't know a ton about him if I'm, if I'm being completely honest. Um, so you might need to enlighten me, Matthew, what you, what your initial thoughts were. As I said, I, I remember watching him against Bublik where he lost, um, and got to be honest at that time, nothing really jumped out at me. But um, I do, I did, I watched that tie break last night, and the boy, the boy looks a player. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but I know that Bublik won six four six one, um, and so, so yeah, so it's five two. Danny Evans, by the way, we've we've absolutely um, sailed. Is it just me? Have we absolutely sailed through this second? I was set? about to say it's been what an hour and seven minutes. It's already in, like deep, deep into the second set. So yeah, we've just it's gone very, very quickly. Yeah. So Dan Evans looking like he's uh, dialed in at this point. He certainly didn't start the match like that. Um, but yeah, he's got that kind of aggressive look in his eye, uh, mm. and that's when Dan Evans plays his best when he's yes. when he's wanting to fight somebody when he's wanting to oh, jump across that yeah. net and start swinging. Uh, yeah. Is when Dan Evans plays his his best tennis. So um, a bit like Andy Murray, really, in terms of like Andy Murray when he's. When he's not a happy bunny, um, yeah, I, I think I don't know. Is that everybody? Like I, I do that when I play, but I don't anymore. But when I in the past I played amateur football up here in Scotland and, and Saturday morning leagues, um, you know, often if I'm starting off and I'm slow and then somebody gives me a bit of a nudge or a, a bad tackle, I get right up for it and I start playing better. So um, I don't know. Is that just a way of sports people? I think. It's a way of sports, yeah. Like I was a swimmer for a number of years, and when I was like uh, wanting to beat someone next to me, I just look at look at just next to me, and I was like, just want yeah, to hit them, getting angry, and just like <laughs> going down the water, and yeah. And uh, I swear, when I was thinking thinking um, I'm angry or just something like that, and I swam harder, it worked for me usually. You so, you yeah. definitely got the, the you, you you found out who your opponents were, Greg. You got their Facebook <laughs> pictures, you printed oh, yeah. them out, you put them in the mirror. <laughs> Before you left the house, you were like, "You're going down." <laughs> what what was your what was your swimming stroke? Uh, I was a backstroker. Backstroker, Greg. yeah, yeah, yeah. You impressed me with, with every passing moment. Um, <laughs> so uh, nice one, mate. Nice one. Um, right, uh, we are at fifteen love Sonigo. Um, he is serving to stay in the second set and maintain his uh, his first. Uh, his one set lead. So I've not talked you through a point for a while now, so we'll do so now. Dan Evans. Oh, Sonigo's got that one all wrong. So uh, Sonigo served, really tame uh, second serve um, down the tee. Dan Evans, bit of a short ball, if I'm being honest, uh, uh, down the middle of the court. Uh, Sonigo uh, tried uh, to go for the drop shot, got it all wrong, uh, and the ball landed halfway up his side of the net. Uh, so we'll go again, 15 all. This time serve in, this time return not met by Dan Evans, who looks at the line, uh, thinks the ball was long. Um, no, nobody calling it. So we play on 30 15. Wonder what the weather's like in Miami. Would you like to be sitting in Miami right now, Greg? 
I really would, but apparently it's going to be awful tomorrow. So um, maybe oh, not really? tomorrow. Okay, yeah, so I've, just heard the, a... I've heard the forecast tomorrow and um, Saturday is going to be terrible. Tell me, does the Hard Rock have a roof? I know it's not in the Hard Rock. Well, it is in the Hard no, Rock. I don't think like, so. like with the one roof cover, like all the the stuff, like it would That's come true. in. That's true. Yeah, I, w- I don't know. Was it because there was a bit of rain this morning? But I was uh, this afternoon. But I was at work. Was there? Did you I see it? Or I don't. I know. I mean, like I say, okay. I don't know. I mean, I know that um, obviously the there was rain yesterday or no there was rain monday in, in the kind of florida area and i know that again because i was listening to um some golf stuff um so yeah so i i've got literally no clue um yeah, if there was I... a rain delay um at this time of year uh, i mean i've been to florida once and like it was sunny for like 90 percent of the day but then it would rain for like 20 minutes and it would be like torrential rain like a monsoon yeah, yeah. for like 20 minutes and it'd be like yeah. warm rain um and then uh and then it would go away again. It'd be like an absolute blue sky sun. Um, so, yeah, no idea. Anyone want to enlighten us? Uh, Shrahari, Matthew, Jake. Does uh, do we have roof facilities here? I know we're in the Hard Rock Stadium. I just don't know if the stadium itself has because you know where they are in America, they don't get tons of rain. Most of the sports they play in the Hard Rock probably don't get impacted by rain, even if it was to rain. So I just wonder if if that's something that is part of this uh, this fortnight um who knows but i'm sure somebody out there there's uh, there's hundreds um over 100 of you guys watching remember like subscribe and um, we don't always just focus on tennis greg what we focused on tonight we've thought we've chatted about <laughs> ryanair flights we've chatted about swimming um what else have we chatted about oh, football um, football golf, golf. yeah yeah um, we've went into the, <laughs> the, 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 uh, the premium tour the premier tour whatever it's called um, so yeah, not just Tanegas what... having a bad match though. Sorry, Tanegas yeah. is having a bit of. He's had two unforced in a row. He's not not played very well in this 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 game. Where are you? Where where are you on the on the scoreboard? Advantage Evans. Oh right, okay. I'm just slightly point. ahead. Slightly ahead. Oh, okay, I can't tell what's just happened with you. You you hiding your face well. I'm I'm in the future. <laughs> I'm in the future. <laughs> Well, it's a Sonego serve. Well, oh, nice. Yeah, great, great set point and save. Yeah, so that's where I roughly am. He's trying to serve it just at the moment. Um, Dan Evans taking, um, I think something happened to a racket, either a string or something. So he has gone to change it. Sonego stopped just uh, in mid, mid ball toss, which he has a wee look up to say, What are you doing, mate? Yeah, that is a bit cheeky to go mid, mid ball, mid uh, toss, but there we go. And it's where we are now, Danny. We've got the whole court, uh, and where I am, just uh, about thirty seconds ahead of you. Danny Evans has another break point. Um, he uh, he dragged Sonigo, like you say, having a poor game. This one, this is probably the worst I've seen him. Even though, even from the break of serve, uh, Sonigo was coming into the net. Um, Danny Evans read it, um, forced uh, Sonigo to to do a lazy pick up, uh, and Danny Evans picked him off. So we have another set point to level up this one. Yeah, lovely backhand cross court on that one. And and I'm just going to go. Uh, Sonny has done it again. He's served an ace to save that one. Sorry, Greg. When we get to uh... no, you know, you go, you go ahead. Uh, you get most up to date. Yeah, okay. that's all right with me. It's just because I'm going to be in the same um, wavelength as the as the scoreboard. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, go has now uh, this time an unreturnable. Uh, Dan Evans got a, a racket to it. Um, so he's, he's he's hanging in there as the Italian. I'd it's imagine now it's going to go, go the Italian number two right now or number three. Good question. Uh, let me have a look. I, I think I'd, I'd say he must be, I mean, he must be ahead of Berrettini in the rankings, so he's, he's got to be number two. Yeah, definitely ahead of Berrettini. Um, I would say no, number I, two, yeah, without oh, Massetti. Massetti, oh, Massetti's number two, has it? I don't know, but I just see that he's seeded on the thing, so he must be. Oh, he must be, okay. So we say he's yeah. Italy number two, okay. Let me, I'll have a look, I'll have a proper. They've, they've got to be favourites for that Davis Cup again. Yeah, yeah, bound to. Um, yeah, that's, they're, they're like the whole squad is just looking insane. Like the depth in their, in their team is, is ridiculous. Okay, so Dan Evans, seven for the second set now. 
Well, actually, so it's Sinner, Musetti, Arnaldi, then Sonego. Arnaldi, right? Okay, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. interesting. So Sonego from it uh, just dropped from Italian number two in my <laughs> previous estimations <laughs> to Italian number four in reality. Um, so there you go, Sonego. Right? I didn't know he was that low. I would never have said Arnaldi was ahead of him. Never. Uh, okay, so Dar Evans put on the pressure, smash finish, fifteen love. Good start. Yeah, got a couple of Brits in the crowd giving him the old fist pump. Probably yeah, run yeah. over from his match to cheer him on. That's it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, who was it on last night? Oh, there was, was there, was there two Draper. Brits on? Draper, Draper was on. that was it, Draper was on. Uh, Jack Draper, I mean, again, he's one that just... So up and down, like you know, he, it's I his physical that. though. It's never, it's never actually his tennis. It's his physicality that that gets him down. If he was fit, he'd be. I don't know. I don't want to think where he'd be, but he'd be up there. Aye, it's just like you say. It's just his body. It's a shame for the guy because I think I watched an interview with Sky afterwards, and he said that similar. Like he, he said, like you know, I feel like I'm one of the best players in the world where I can play. Um, yep. But I mean, he's all sorts. Of, I mean, of course, like in Australia, he's he's throwing up into into bins after winning the match. Um, that was, yeah. like, you know, funny, but obviously worrying at the same time when he's, like, shaking hands, pure, hurry up, get to the net. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can, come on, hurry up. <laughs> um, so he can go and throw up in a, in a bin. Um, food poisoning, everything, do you know what I mean? It's, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, funnily enough, like, I, I, I genuinely, genuinely want Draper to to come on and even if we can like you know right now we've got kind of you know we've got this the, the scottish grand slam winner kind of thing but i want Draper, <laughs> I, I quite like uh, draper and um i want him to to come on and, and kind of emulate sir andy um but yeah, he's not definitely. allowed to win he's not allowed to win more than three grand slams though um <laughs> but i don't know he, he's, he's struggling on this in this new crop of kids is he not like to i mean if he's ever to win a grand slam he's gonna have to get past people like alcaraz and sinner over the night he, it could be in one of these eras, like we always said by Andy Murray, that imagine he was in another era, kind of thing. Yeah, like yeah. I mean, I think imagine he had another body, like he'd be, he'd be, he'd be insane, like because it just it lets him down physically. So I think he's, I don't mind my my British hat on, but I think he's one of the highest potential in in, and he could get top twenty this year, top ten. You know, I I, I genuinely do believe that, mm -hmm. and from what I've seen when his in his game, I think he can reach reach really high heights. Um, in the end of twenty twenty two, I would agree with you. I uh, I yeah. actually wrote an, an article um, for just a, an online website when I was trying to build my writing portfolio, and one of the things was I did do five to watch in twenty twenty three at the time, uh, and you know Jack Draper was number one and on that yeah. list um, because I thought he was going to have a really strong season. I think he. he he started to make a couple of moves in 2022. He impressed me, and uh, and I just thought, yeah, this kid's gonna gonna kind of come into his own. He's gonna have a breakthrough season. Um, in 2023, it didn't happen again, like you say, because of injury. And I just don't know now. I just don't know. My perspective's changed a little bit because I think even if he gets the body to where where he wants it, does he have the game now to get past like you know an Alcaraz and a Sinner in the one event? Um, I think that's gonna be really difficult, but. Uh, you've got other kids coming through as well. Um, yep. It's a tough tour. I, I was thinking this the other day watching Indian Wales. Like the quarter final lineup of Indian Wales was really strong. Like I, I really yeah. liked it. Um, I thought, you know, every every match up in that quarter final, you, you didn't really have anyone who was, you know, too far out with the, the top of the game. Um, and so I just thought to myself, like, you know, when you're getting to the quarter final, these events now, you, you, you're in for a, you know, a real, real match. Um, and I just, I just wonder if Jack Draper has got that ability, like you say, partly down to the body, um, to be able to to beat these, to beat four or five of these top guys in a row. Do you know what I mean? So I do hope it happens. Um, I just, uh, I just worry. I think, um, I think he's got. A is it? I might be getting one of the two right, but one of one of the sides isn't 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 the top. It might be the backhand, um, uh, or it might be the forehand and the backhand really strong. Um, just, I think his backhand's very strong. Yeah. So must, okay, so then it's the forehand. Then that one. Of, I know that one of the wings is the is the wing that's letting him down. I watched him um, in that final against. It was it the final against Lehechka in yes. Adelaide or Brisbane. I watched yep. it, um, and it just like the forehand it must have been the forehand. One of the sides was just you know fading on him completely, and he just lost the match because of it. And Lehechka, because Lehechka 
had worked it out and just kind of kept playing the ball to the to the weaker side and mm. and he didn't have an answer. But again, you could say, like you say, fitness is is, is all the important for Jack. And yeah, and I think he'll reach his if he. I think if he win, if he beats Jerry, who's got in round two, which would be a tough one, um, he'll give reaches probably. I think he reaches his career high, which will give him a morale boost. And then he'll what play. Will uh, that be? Where will he be? Uh, I don't know where he'll be exactly. Um, Evans is taking the first, uh, second set, six three. So we're going three, as we both thought. Yes. Um, Which we both thought, but maybe didn't think. Not um, in this time, anyway. Not in an hour no, and twenty. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think it'd be take this this short time. Um, Let me have a look at the rankings. So live ATP rankings. Okay. So he's thirty thirty eight. I think his career high is thirty seven. So if he wins, he'll go above that. He should do anyway. Um, Yes, you are right. So he is on... That's his live ranking, by the way. Live is 38. So Yeah, live ranking 38. He's actually on the same as Arnaldi for points. Um, so they can't be separated. Uh, so... Arnaldi's just ahead of him with, like, 10. <laughs> so... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Arthur Feast as well. So he's out, so they can gain ground on him. And Jose Ali the same if he oh, if he, he loses, you know. He won so, he won today though. So uh, he won earlier. Yeah, but should game. he lose the next one, he yeah. might go down a bit, you know. So and he plays I think Jose Ali Sim plays uh I Zverev in the that. next round. So Oh does he? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That'll be a good match. Uh, well, I don't know. I, I think I, I mean do you know uh do you ever listen to Tennis Unfiltered? No, I don't. I think you, I think you mentioned this last time. Did I say what? I didn't, then, what I'm talking about Felix. No, no. I think you just mentioned that podcast before, ah, right. and so I forgot Felix, to listen to it. <laughs> your man, your man, Calvin Betton, right? So he was at an event years and years ago, a junior event, um, watching all the kids. And this, I think, the, the kids were like 14, 13, 14 at the time. And at the time, Felix Auger. So this is what he says. He says Felix Auger Alisim was miles ahead of everybody, like miles. There was like no way at the time watching that you were thinking, this kid does not become a Grand Slam champion. At the same event, Yannick Sinner. And at oh, the time, everyone's yeah. going, this guy, he's all right, but he's probably not going to make it. He's not. If he does make it, he's not going to be like a Grand Slam winning tennis player. He's, yeah. he's, he's going to just be one of the run-of-the-mill players. He'll make it onto the tour, probably not you know, break into the top 30, top 20. And it just showed you how far at the time that Felix Auger Ali Asim was compared to Yannick Sinner. And now, yeah. looking at the difference, we are here, what, 10 years after that event? Yannick Sinner, Grand Slam champion, number three in the world. Felix Auger Ali Asim, more than likely never going to win a Grand Slam. Crazy. Yeah, it's sad, but true. It's sad, but probably true. Um, and it's happened quite a bit. I remember when uh, Kyrgios was commentating in in Australia, and he said that Medvedev was terrible as a youngster. Like Kyrgios yeah. would beat him easy, and now Medvedev's a Grand Slam champion as well. Yeah. So it's like you know, it happens quite a bit, probably. And there's probably kids that you've seen play who you think are oh, terrible. And I wonder where that narrative gone... comes from, though. Like in terms of like saying <laughs> yeah. terrible, um, because I heard the same about Berrettini. I heard the same about mm. that Berrettini wasn't even that great a player. Um, and I mean, this was getting said. That, I mean, what did get said was that Berrettini wasn't that great a player and it was Yannick Sinner that, that everybody thought was going to be the big player for for Italian tennis. But then at the same time, this Calvin Betton saying, oh, Yannick Sinner wasn't he great. So you just, I, I think you hear all these different rumours because it makes yeah, a really yeah. good story arc in terms of, ah, this boy was a rubbish junior and look at him now. At the same time, how many junior world number ones and junior opens and junior Grand Slam winners, you know, the step up onto the professional game is a big one. I remember yeah. at the same time as, as I first heard about Alcaraz, I also heard about Massetti because that was the mm. chat. The chat mm. was like, look at these two kids, Massetti and Alcaraz. And as it stands right now, I know, I know Massetti beat Alcaraz, I think, in Hamburg a couple of years ago in a final um, yep. on clay. Um, but, um, but so, I so what I'm saying is like they, their careers went in very different directions. And you just need to wonder, like, you know, what is that down to? Sometimes it's about mentality. Uh, and sometimes it's about you know just your Donald Duck in it, your luck, and just yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And just where you are, if you're at the right place at the right time, you're in the right event, you play the right player, you maybe get a walkover in an event that then gets you more money that then allows you to like, you know, employ a different coach or a different physio or a different fitness trainer. You basically connect with your physio, your fitness trainer better than you maybe somebody else connects with theirs. It's just your career is surely about your talent, but it's also about your mentality and your luck. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think Sitz Pass was a uh, was a number one junior, and he's not set the world alight with his with his tennis, is he? Really, um, everyone was telling him to win a Grand Slam, and the same for Zverev. Well, same for Zverev, and they both haven't. So, well, yeah, I mean, Sitz Pass is a funny one because he has, um, you know, he's come, come so close so many times. Again, he was talked about, like you say, uh, as uh, the, the the next gen or the the next 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 gen or the next gen two. He has all the all the talent in the world, that kid, but he just can't <laughs> he just yeah. can't uh, turn it into a. Into, I don't know if I feel sorry many. for him or not. I don't yeah. know if uh, I, don't know. I, I do Same. think he's t- I do think his his time is coming going. I don't. I think um, it would be very difficult for him now to. I mean, I don't know. Are you you're in the talking tennis WhatsApp, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Did you see that? I mean, there was a there was a great debate and about sets of pass about this very subject. Yeah, about I think five so, or yeah. six days, and some really really strong views and opinions about you know sets of pass. I think I think Vanch was of the opinion that sets of pass is still potentially a Grand Slam winner. I think others, maybe Damien. Um, I do think on his day, and if he has a good tournament, I think he can and maybe will. And he's still what? How old is he? He's still. Uh... Who's this? Sets of pass? Yes, yeah. Oh, he's only twenty-five. I mean, yeah. I think he's still got it in him to go and win one, but I think it's just whether he can play so consistently to go and do it, you know. Um, and it, it's whether the, he's got a one-handed bat again, and it's one of the best out there. But it's whether that trumps him a little bit, and because you know the one-handed bat again is dying and all that saying. But <laughs> um, I don't want to get into that debate, but. Um, yeah, it's just whether he can just be consistent throughout the whole tournament. Like, as you say, he got to the final of French Open, lost it. He was two sets up to Novak Djokovic, but he was two sets up and he still lost it. So it's just yeah. that edge, isn't it? It's just that winning edge that he hasn't got, really. Yeah, no, I think uh, I think you're spot on. I'm just um, another player that jumped into my mind when we were speaking there was uh, was Denis Shapoval- Shapovalov, who burst onto the scene. There was all talk about, um, you know, that he was going to be the, the kind of main man for, for Canadian tennis. A couple of years ago, Canadian tennis was in like, you know, what a shred that won the Davis Cup. It had, you know, Shabavalov and Felix Auger Aliassime. Auger Aliassime basically was, was pretty much unbeatable at, at that time of the year. You know, it yeah. was the indoor season. He was winning event after event after event. I think three in a row. Um yep. Shapovalov when he first burst on the scene. I remember him beating Sinner in a five-setter, I think it was. Um, I think it was Sinner. He beat at the Australian Open at the start of 2021. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was that year. Uh, he beat he beat um, in a five-setter, first round. And you were thinking, how are these two players first round? I'm sure Shapovalov won that. And again, you just now look three years later yeah. and you're just thinking... Just in- Interesting enough, well, he has been injured, hasn't he? But interesting enough, there sits past the shuffle of playing each other in second round. So uh, that, that'll be interesting. <laughs> and it sits past in Yep, yeah, oh, yeah. That'll be a lovely match because that'll be two mm. back, you know, single handed backhanders. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, uh, Valov was hitting that backhand really, really well yesterday. Um, because uh, I watched, but I watched part, parts of that match so. Yeah, I quite. I mean, I quite like Derek Shapovalov. He's a, I like how he's, like, he tries different things in terms of like his career. Like he's a pure him and I can't remember who else. I, I've got this record label or something. They rap. They sell. They do rap tunes. Does he? Aye. I've never heard this before. Honestly, mate. Honestly. <laughs> um, so, aye, it's uh, it's crazy. He's still only won one title in his career. That's a bit crazy. I'm trying to find out on his Wikipedia what his rap sh- rap stuff. Oh, music. Uh, it's Mutet. Mutet. Is it Corriton Muti? Well, he, it fe- there's a track that features him. So whether it's him all the time, I don't know. But apparently You're there's a track right. that features him. You're right. It's Corriton Muti. Track features French tennis player Corriton Muti. Yes. There you go. I'm looking at it now. I, he does rap tunes. Would you believe it? There you go. I've taught you something, Greg. <laughs> you have indeed. I'm going to have to go and listen to them. You are going to have to go and listen to it. Right. Dan Evans is fist pumping. What has happened? Is he just broken serve? He's... Well, he, 
Probably he was. Just, he's got. A, he's got three break, two break points now, so he probably what has. If you're turn around, this has been so. Yes, he has just broken serve. Apologies we'll what happens for anyone. Um, anyone hoping we were talking you because through the actual tennis and not talking about it's Canadian right. tennis player yeah. Raptions, but Dan Evans has broken serve. Um, so we are one. All he's turned this match on its head. Yeah, so now hit it right in the net. So Sonigo three and zero record against. Uh, Dan Evans in their previous matchups. That goes 2020 in Vienna on the hard court. It was a semi final, which Sonego won uh, in Miami here 2023. So a year ago, actually, I didn't know this. Sonego beat him uh, in a three setter. Uh, Dan Evans won the first set 6 4, and Sonego won it 6 3 6 2. It's potentially revenge for Dan Evans very early in the third set. But uh, Dan Evans, who also was beaten by the Italian, in four sets at uh, the Australian Open in the first round earlier in the year, um, but he has the lead in the crucial third set. Um, so, Dan Evans, I'm just having a quick look. World number 43 at the moment. He's got a two and six record uh, so far this year. Only eight matches played because of those defeats. Uh, a one and five record in Miami. Um, that is, uh, he has reached the second round uh, in 19, 20 and 23. Of course, he would have been seeded for some of them. That's why he's only had one victory in Miami and reached three second rounds. Um, bah, 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 rally from two sets down. Just looking at some Dan Evans facts for no reason, just because I love to go down rabbit holes. Uh, Evans mm -hmm. is looking for his first top 100 win. This is an interesting fact, Greg. Here we go. You know, coming out with the knowledge. Hello, Ashley, by the way. How are we doing? Good day to you, Ashley. Um, yeah, so Dan Evans is looking for his first top 100 win at an ATP Masters 1000 event since defeating number 50, Nakashima at the 2022 Paris Masters. And he aims to avenge the second round loss to Senego last year. So there we go. Some facts that I probably yeah. should have read out earlier in this match because we're now deep into the third. Well, not deep into the third set. Deep into the match early in the third set. Uh, yes. So Dan Evans, will he see it out from here? Where did this change come from? Did you see it coming, Greg? Are you the all-knowing Greg? <laughs> uh, well, I thought he'd win the second set because he did that against uh, Safulin, so I thought he might do that, but I didn't see him breaking to start off with. Um, but yeah, he just, he just seems he's serving much, much better. Um, his serving stats in that second round was uh, second set, sorry, were much, much better than Sonego's and much better than the first set. So yeah, I think that he's upped his game a little bit there. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for him to advance to the like quite far in this tournament because he plays Eubanks next, who's on a little run of um, awful run of form himself. So, and yeah. then he'll play either Zverev or Auger Aliassim, which will be both of which will be very, very tough. So, yeah. let's just say that's Zverev right now and he's not winning yeah. that. So, yeah, probably a third round. Um, uh, and you know what? You can text me, um, if he does beat Zverev, if, uh, we might even be commenting, who knows? Um, <laughs> Good return there by uh, Lorenzo Sonigo. Um, he uh, return, yeah. just jumped on uh, Dan Evans' second serve, a kind of short second serve. Um, he looked in the... It's just 30 old. He looked in charge of... Um, Hello, Ghost. Good to see you. Evans in three, get in. Um, Sonigo just went uh, long and wide with a fa fairly comfortable forehand. So Dan Evans, two points to, to take a 2 0 lead. What's the plans for the weekend then, Greg? You just sporting it up? Anything Anything interesting? Probably, yeah. yeah. I mean, the rain doesn't hold much hope. I don't know if anyone's got the forecast, but as I said, I think it's going to be pretty pretty bad rain for most of the most of the thing. But, um, yeah. Brutal. Uh, maybe, yeah, brutal. But um, yeah, and it's international break with football, which means no Premier League, which means it's a bit dull. Um, you can watch so, Scotland play the Netherlands tomorrow. I can, and I probably will, to be fair. So that'll be, yes, that'll be a good one. I like, I like it. <laughs> uh, Ghost, how did you break your pinky toe? Uh, I'm always oh. fearful of asking this question to Ghost. Um, it could be any answer at all. Sometimes not broadcastable, not streamable. Um, so uh, I do wish you the best, um, Ghost. Uh, I uh, 
I, I hope you are okay. I just I sometimes I have to tread carefully with Ghost in terms of how he uh, broke his pinky toe because there could be some <laughs> hidden joke that I'm just setting myself up for. So, um, Ghost, I hope you're well. I wish you a, a safe uh, back to, to full fitness. Um, you'll be out and about the dance floors um, sometime soon, I'm sure. Um, yes, Dan, Dan Evans. Yes, come on, uh, Dan Evans. Um, I, I, I think a... he's talking about your, your accent there, Greg. That's not my accent. <laughs> oh, is he talking about the the Dan Evans? I'm not. I'm not a Brummy. No, no, no. That's uh, Evans is Brummy though. So there we go. Um, yes, Ghost sticking up for for Glasgow, um, and uh, so you beat him rotten, and your pinky toe got broken. Um, so I assume that means you were kicking the poor fellow on the ground, Ghost, um, uh, and you were also doing it quite a weird way like your, <laughs> you were doing it with the outside of your boot you were trying to curl them round the corner um, ok so Dan Evans let's stop talking nonsense let's speak about the <laughs> Tenai um, well, uh, uh, Sonego just hit a very lucky net cord to um, save a, a game point but Dan Evans has got another one yep yeah, uh, and uh, where I am at uh, Dan Evans is just taking it um, so Dan Evans is 2 and all. Oh, um, what is the stat? It's, the Bet365 are giving us some great stats, but they just give you it for like ten, like five seconds. Did so okay. they've got, oh, it's just gone away. First serve points won 74%. So Sonigo, 68% Dan Evans. I'm just going to read these out as they come in. Uh, second serve points won 29%. Sonigo, 45% Dan Evans. What's the next one? This is great. This is better than the tennis. Oh, it's stopped. Um, get yourself Bet365. I'm telling you that, Greg. Um, there are other. Yeah. I, other I betting firms are available uh, oh yes 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 i uh yeah i use it but i don't watch anything on it so maybe i should but i pay for sky so i need to i need to make my get my money out of it you know absolutely absolutely i'd love to see if there's a graphic about how many points you know how there was previously about um sonigo winning points or there was dan evans winning points dan evans, I think that uh, only, love... sorry that I, I think that only comes in when they win like 10 in a row or nine in a row or something so it doesn't happen that often yeah, well, um, I'm just having a look here. Uh, yeah, sorry, it's funny. Like, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you a little bit about journalism, right? Um, yeah. Do you? What do you do as a day job? I work in marketing. So, marketing, uh, not as exciting as journalism. Yeah, listen, I, I I'll need to pick your brain one day, Greg, because uh, that's uh, something that I'm starting to have a quite look at for a couple of things. But anyway, right. So I've got a source from up in Glasgow from the old old paper that I used to work at. This guy used to feed me stories all the time. And like for two years, he's never been wrong about anything, right? Never, like he would, he would tell me, oh, there's been a, a break-in or there's been a fire somewhere, or there's a big crash somewhere or what, there's something happening here. And all the stories he gives me have been right. So then today he texts me and he says, a story for you, but I have no names or proof, but David Beckham, has hired out the Cameron House on April for a party for Victoria. There was a woman and a man who had it booked for their wedding. Cameron House, which is a big, massive hotel up here in Scotland, up like yeah. outside of Loch Lomond, says Cameron House called the woman and told them a celeb wanted to hire the entire hotel that she had her wedding booked on the date. Um, she asked what celeb it was. They said they couldn't tell her. He said that the, the, the celeb, this is obviously Beckham, for security reasons, he had to book the full hotel. And if she agreed to cancel, he would pay for her wedding whenever and whatever it would be. He would also put £100,000 in her bank and also pay off her mortgage. And then so the guy, the guy ends, this has to be a big scoop for you, Tom. So I'm thinking that is a big scoop. Wow. So basically <laughs> the story is Cameron House, which is like this wonderful hotel on the banks of Loch Lomond, um, this woman's got her wedding booked for it. David Beckham yep. wants to take Victoria Beckham for something for her uh, for her birthday or her fiftieth in April, and basically wants to book out the whole hotel. He's basically what are you laughing at, John? Go away! Right? So, uh, I'm trying to see if this is real or not. Like, it's, so right? So, and he's going to pay for this woman's wedding date for the whole hotel. He's going to give her a hundred thousand pounds and uh, and pay her mortgage off and pay for her wedding anywhere and anywhere. Right? 
So I send it to my editor saying, look at this scoop. And she then sends me an article says, this has been a rumor in journalism for like 10 years. They sent me this oh. story from the Herald <laughs> in 2011. So, um, so yeah, so it's all it's all nonsense, but I thought I had a pure big scoop this, tonight. So why did he send like, it to you then? Why? Because he apparently got told of a pal of a pal. So oh, I, sent the, okay. I sent the link back to him and said, John, this was this is an article from 2011 about this exact <laughs> story. And then he went, he went, I'm so embarrassed. Um, but anyway, right, back to the tennis. I think John's uh, John's mocking me here. Um, so I think that uh, that brief appearance of him was uh, get back to the tennis. That's all that was. I think that was. Yeah, I think I think that, that, was, the <laughs> I think that was the boss saying uh, that was the boss coming in and just giving us the, yeah, the side eye and then going out again. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's that's the one. That's the one. <laughs> right. Dan Evans has another break point where I'm at. Um, you're at the same place as me somehow. Um, I think he's just done it with a cheeky lob. Um, so uh, great I, point for Dan Evans to go double break. That was a great, great backhand that hit the line. Yeah, great one to set it up anyway. I was, uh, I was too busy talking about David Beckham hiring out hotels and paying <laughs> off somebody's mortgage. Uh, good return by Dan Evans. He goes cross court with a forehand. Sonigo goes up the line, comes in the net. Sonigo goes wet for the volley, looks long and wide. Is it long and wide? What's happened? Dan Evans left it. It's hard to tell with any commentary, but the fact that Dan Evans is trying to eat his tennis racket says to me that that ball was in. I think we're on line judges this week, aren't we? Or we're on challenges, are we? I don't know. No, I think we're on electronic. Because I've heard the, um, the, the woman on the thing say, yeah. I'm telling you, the Shapovalov match that I watched yesterday, um, sorry, oh. Ghost has put me off. Cameron House is like a, ho a castle like. Uh, hotel. I actually was in the news for all the wrong reasons over the last few years because a guy was cleaning up and it, and basically he, there was a fireplace and he got all the the cinders of the fireplace and put it in a cupboard and burnt the whole house, uh, the whole thing down. Two people died. Jesus. Yeah. Anyway, we're, we're light and cheery on this channel. So uh... <laughs> <laughs> Dan Evans, another break point. Uh, Sonigo looks at the ground for longed. Uh, the way he is playing. How has this match slipped from his grasp after a 6-1 first set? Quite the comeback and quite the downfall from Sonego, really. I'm telling you, Ghost, Google Cameron House Fire, right? Just Google that, Ghost. Anyway, great That's serve horrific, by horrific. Sonigo, uh, unreturnable by Dan Evans. And uh, and yes, we're back to Deuce. This might be the longest game of the match so far. I if can't not, remember a longer yeah. one. If not for Senego serving, he'd be out of this. Yeah, absolutely. Because that, that absolutely. serving has, has, been, has saved him so many times. And yeah. Evans' returning has been on point for, you know, since that first set. His, his returning has been great. So he's had to serve well to stay in this. Yep, since, uh, since Evans broke in the second set, um, he hasn't looked back, has he? He's not really been in, under any trouble on, on his serve. Uh, yeah. I think, you know, by watching it, he's had at least a break point in most of the Sonego game. Um, uh, the players are rallying at the moment. It's backhand to backhand, cross court, both on the just side. Um, Sonego seems to go, it seems to wrong foot Evans. I can't really understand where Evans was going there. It looked like he, he maybe envisioned that he was going down line with that one but I mean the way that he was set up he could only go in one direction um, it would have been very hard to line ball that um, but anyway Sonigo um, wins the point, he's got game point uh, Yes I agree Jane I think you know how I think this will be a hard one for Sonigo to to take because he was just in so much control um, and I think clearly what, what we can see now is it's because Dan Evans just uh, hadn't come out, hadn't started, maybe yeah. hadn't warmed up properly. Yeah, it took him a while to get off the ground, definitely. But he's been um, con complete control since midway through the second set. So I'm going to go now, game point, just to, to half the deficit. This one could go either way still now. Um, good, strong forehand by Dan Evans. That one's out this time, is it? It was a, a block return lob by Lorenzo Sonigo, and it goes long and wide. We're back to just definitely now the longest. Um, it was totally burned down. Yes, Ghost. Jeez, I, I don't tell fibs. I don't tell <laughs> lies. I only speak truth. So anyway, 
Where yeah, shall we go? Where will this conversation sh- take us now? <laughs> We've been literally everywhere. <laughs> I enjoy it. That's why I, I. That's why I come on. You know, when you listen to content, you don't want it all just to be about the content. That's <laughs> true. That makes that's very, very true. Very true. Uh, remember, no, no, guys, no. and look here. See me talking nonsense. It's stuck. Uh, I mean, the the, the, the viewership has 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 went up. So I I think this is down to to my my David Beckham chat. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. X, we golden balls, we golden balls. Um, I'm never going to forget that goal he scored against Greece in 2002. Man, like as a Scotsman, I was like, they're not going to qualify for this event. This is amazing. And yeah, he yeah. That free kick at Old Trafford. Even man. as your Scottish head on, did you you cheered for that? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely not. I can remember. Oh my god, head and hands. As we say up here, greeting, greeting. So I was, I was greeting. I was, I was just young enough to not. I think I was just about young enough not to remember that. I think it was about five at the time, so I don't really remember it. But I, I watched it back, obviously, and like, yeah, the commentary is iconic. And <laughs> is that Clive moment. Tilsley? Was it Clive Tilsley on ITV? I don't think it was. No, no, I don't think so. It didn't sound like him. I might be uh, wrong. You could, you can trust me. I wouldn't know that because as soon as that goal went in, the the TV went on mute. <laughs> um, understandable. Right, okay, so Sonigo has saved those break points and is uh, is now uh, just the one break down. Um, uh, so, yeah, he is 1-2. Uh, Dan Evans, 7 to take a 3-1 lead. The players are sitting down at the moment. Uh, any other scores going on, Greg? Have you got your, your score app on the go? What's happening? Yeah, I'll just have a look. Um, have a look, see... Uh, Humphreyman got the first set 6-4 against Rusevori. It's currently 2-all on serve. Uh, Marajan got the first set 6-3 over Kovacevic, and he's winning. He's leading 5-2 in at the second, so looking to win on that one. Um, any other? Madison Keys is 6-2, 5-2 up, uh, and she's serving to to win the, the, the match. And... Ostapenko is on serve 5 4 with uh, when we were talking about earlier, Siegmund. Is that how you say it? Lara, Lara Siegmund, yes. That's the one. Uh, no, John, I have not been to a World Cup. However, I will see you in the US, Canada, and Mexico in uh, two years' time, is it now? Two years' time. Um, but yes, a, a little dig there from the Englishman. Um, Anyway, let's stay to the pitch. <laughs> um, right, so Dan Evans, uh, seven for three, one. Um, where are we at now? Where, listen, that looks like a, is that a digital? Yeah, it's, sorry. I just thought they had a pure old school, like paper scoreboard behind Dan Evans there. Do you know, do you know oh, what I mean? Oh, imagine. Like, change. The, it does look sport. like it, to be fair. Does yeah. that? And so it's not yeah. just me. Not, not yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Vuvuzela, I could tell you what World Cup that was, Ghost. That was uh, South Africa, wasn't it? South Africa, yeah. South Africa 2010. Oh, that was annoying, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, God, yes. Yes, it was. Um, um, Marajan on 6362, so he's into the second round. What do you think of uh, Fabian Marajan? Like, I quite like him. I think he's, uh, I mean, he was, he I mean, was well yeah. beaten against Alcaraz, but. Um, I just, well, I, I, I've liked him ever since he won. Uh, ever since he beat Alcaraz, it was one of those that I just I liked start, him ever yeah. since then, and I've started rooting for him now. So yeah. I'll always keep my eye on him in the draws. Um, I don't know who he faced next, actually, um, but I really like him. I think he's yeah, I think he's really good. Um, I don't think he'll win the major major events, but it'd be great if he did. Yeah, I suppose that was going to be my next question. Like you know, as I always say, is where uh, where is the ceiling for for Fabian Marashan? I'm trying to find Maybe. out. Uh, I had it. Um, I don't have it now, but I did have um, his draw up a second ago. Oh, he's playing Runa next. That'll be a yes. Fun match. That'll be a good one. Holger Runa, yes. So that'll be a very fun match. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Um, looking forward to that. I mean, uh, I'm actually off tomorrow, so I'm going to when this one finishes, I'm going to settle down. Um, in fact, I'm not really off. I try and stay up late, Greg, and because I've got an 18 month old. You know he's going to be up at six. Never off anyway. when you've got one of them, right? Well, I know he's going to be. Up, I know he's going to be up at six a.m. anyway, right? So, I think I say to myself, I'll stay up until like three in the morning and I'll watch tennis. I'll watch Miami and I can watch the matches that I would never usually watch because I'd usually be in my bed because I'd have work. And then it gets to like midnight and I'm like, 
this wee boy's going to be up in six hours' time, and I'm going to be a pure moody. I would, I would say, I would say, leave it for tonight and then stay up tomorrow night because I think the matches tomorrow are more. Well, you say that. More entertaining to me. But you say that, but you've just warned me that there's going to be no play tomorrow because of the rain and I nobody. If the rain delays going on, then you'll be up later and then it might start again. So yeah, just do an all nighter. Um, still, yeah. nobody has let us know uh, if Miami. Now I could have, I could have googled it by now, guys. Um, so I'm disappointed in you all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Greg's parental advice based on tennis. Yes, thanks, Greg. Yeah, I'll take that on board, mate. Well, cheers, cheers, fella. Um, You're the parent there. <laughs> um, uh, yes, g- guys, t- tennis, tennis aficionados. Um, is uh, is there a, is there a roof on this Hard Rock Stadium? Uh, these Hard Rock events. Is the if there was to be a big rain pour down, um, do we have stop play or what? What happens? Do we do we fire on the roof in the big the big stadium court? I suppose, as you say, I don't I don't know. No roof. Thank you, John. There we go. End of discussion. God's sake, <laughs> closed question that wasn't it? Jesus. Yeah, Christ. that was a great one. <laughs> could, could I could I like put him in? Well. They're thinking about getting a roof in 2025, but they don't have the budget or something like that. Something to give us a bit of chat, but just no roof. Did you, I think he's definitely hinting for us, Greg, to, to actually speak about the Evans, uh, the Evans sorry go match. So right, Evans is just absolutely netballed one when it was a, a fairly tame volley. Um he's two one up, 30 all, bit of uh maybe a bit of pressure. On yeah. uh, on his surf here, the wind. The camera's just cut to the nearby palm trees. Um, now I don't want to go down a, a transgression of, you know, what's the the biggest palm tree in the world? But <laughs> palm trees look like they're blowing a gale. So it seems like it's a maybe Greg the weatherman is uh, maybe this storm that you're warning is all about is coming in now, Greg. Yeah, the conditions in Indian Wells as well with all the rain and now in Miami with the wind and rain. It just seems like America's having a I've well, an off month. Funnily enough, I thought that Wendy Wells was one of the tamer ones. I remember two years ago when literally the players were getting blown off the court. It was so windy. Like, literally, they had to kind of stop play because they're in the middle of the desert. Sand was getting in their eye. It was that windy. Yes, I remember, um, yeah, yeah. Now, Sonigo has just forced a, a break point and he's absolutely up for it. He, he's, he's getting the crowd up. He's doing the old, come on. Um, to uh, to the crowd, he can sniff a chance here. Um, it's definitely in the rallies more than he was now, and that was a great rally to. Yeah, a really really important point. point here because for me, if he breaks now, we're we're back to very much game on. Yeah, um, we're back on serve. However, if Dan Evans can come out of this, take uh, take a three one lead and put the pressure back on Sonigo, um, this could this could break the. Break the mold for uh, sorry, I'm just getting distracted by the actual rally, which is on the go at the moment. So go took an early kind of uh, grip of the rally, but Dan Evans has fought back. So go now goes into the net, and it's now Dan Evans who fist pumps. Will he will he try and G up the crowd as a come and have it kind of thing? Break the spirit. I think I was trying to mean there before I got distracted. Um, can you give me two minutes? I'll be back in two. Minutes. You go for it, Greg. Okay. Greg has uh, has left the building. So we've got Dan Evans serving. <laughs> right, Dan Evans serving. Sorry, I'm getting distracted all the time. I've I've not got enough attention span for this, for this malarkey. Um, but my favourite palm tree in the world is uh there actually used to be a palm tree around the corner from my house in Scotland, believe it or not, but I think it died because of the climate. And I'm not even kidding you on. Like the, 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 for some reason, this girl, she was in my school as well, the girl, and her parents had a palm tree in the garden. It was really bizarre. Um, so, um, Sonigo. <laughs> right, Sonigo hasn't taken that point. I don't know what happened, but um, his, his team, his box, do not look best pleased. Um, I think he must have made um, some sort of error when he should have put away the shot. I should have been watching um, talking palm trees. <laughs> palm tree patter. Tell you. Palm trees in Glasgow. Right. <laughs> of course I come back to palm trees in, Bl- in Glasgow. 
I'm telling you, I was saying that there was a girl in my school and she lived around the corner from me and like her parents had like two palm trees like in their garden. But like they didn't last long. I can remember this, but I always remember I used to walk that way to school and you'd always see it and you're like, oh my God, there's palm trees in Scotland. <laughs> but it didn't, it didn't last very long, do you know what I mean? But I just remember... I can't being, imagine, they, yeah. Just being really they get lots bizarre. of rain. I'm sure they get lots of rain. In, in I mean, they don't need sun. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, if Palm Street Patter do, Palm Street's need sun. Get your answers in before 10 o'clock and we will discuss it um, <laughs> on the post-match show. Maybe an ATP weekly this week. Um, right, so Dan Evans is coming through is the good news for British tennis fans. Dan Evans, 3-1, staves off that break point. I heard Mercedes coach call him Lenny, and I thought it was funny. Lenny Mercedes. Ah, that's quite good. I like that. So, okay. Yeah. Any other any other good tennis nicknames, guys? Anyone got? Um, I mean, I don't really know many t- tennis nicknames. I know that Murray gets called Muzza. Muzza, yeah, yeah. Really imaginative that one. Yes, <laughs> there we go. John's put up. Well, I guess the hive mind, the the hive mind thinking the same thing. Any other any other good? Tennis next to think. think uh, the Fed, Fed, Fed Express. Fed, yeah, yeah. Baby Fed. Obviously, Dimitrov. I don't think he liked that one. No, that's not. <laughs> he didn't really like that one, I'm sure. <laughs> Just saying in his shadow the whole career, but he's, he's doing well now. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure, actually. No, I've done. So we've got Lenny for Massetti, which I quite like. Pistol Pete. Could, could, Medi Bear, yeah, Medi-bear. I really like that one. Have you just made that up, John? Or is that just you, what you call him? Is that what is that? That's what John calls him in commentary. Here comes <laughs> Medi Bear on the court. Um, um, so I'm gonna go doing a bit, uh, a bit of fight for it in this service game. Thirty love, although again, like I said, as soon as I say that, he puts it long. Thirty fifteen. Stream is just frozen, which is good. Oh, it's like, luckily it's on the main Sky Sports channel. Medvedev means bear. Ah, okay. My apologies for... Ah, there we go. God, right, okay, I get it, guys. <laughs> Jesus. Jane and I didn't Ash- know that, to be fair. So Jane that's, and Ashley, you know... proper defending John there, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, God. Next time I'm at a pub quiz. What does Medvedev mean in Russian? <laughs> Don't know why. Don't know why I'm at a Russian pub quiz. Do yeah, I'm not sure what the, I'm not sure that accent was. Um, um, right, thirty. Oh, Dan Evans has fought back in this game, um, and it's because Sonigo tried to go for a winner, um, and uh, it didn't make it into the tram lines, or it made it into the tram lines and not into the court. Um, when he sent a message to Roger Paul, try <laughs> pissed away. Here. That's funny. That's funny. Did Tim Heyman not have a? A nickname, but he, he, he wasn't like Henners or something, right? Was it, oh, Henners, yeah. But was it all like boring? Was he not? Was there not a Tim? You know the Harry Enfield sketch, and there was Tim Nice but Dim. Was that not oh, what they used to call? I don't think I've seen that, but that that's yeah, that sounds about right. For I'm sure Harry I, I might, I might be, I might be being really, really um, degrading to, to Tim Henman, but I'm sure he used because he just was kind of seen as this nice guy image, um, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying. Pop quiz, who was the original pistol? Save six points and we're in a tie break. Save six. Pop quiz, who was the original pistol Pete and which sport did he play? That's a goal. Don't know. I it's got to be before, it's got to be post, uh, pre 80s, I'd say. It's not as simple as a shooting one in the Olympics, is it? Or something like that. I was thinking that. I was thinking that. Uh, I'm going to say baseball or basketball that's, and it'll yeah, be like that's a good chance. some some ridiculous guy that Alan never heard of like Pete Jennings <laughs> just made up that name Peter Jennings who's Peter Jennings? I've no idea <laughs> so John tell me about oh I was close I said, I was close basketball USA. Oh, uh, John, go, yeah. what is Laura Siegman doing? I was trying to tell um I was trying to tell Craig earlier on about Siegmund against Goff. I think you were on the phone to Anastasia at the time, and I was telling Greg about Siegmund uh, and Goff at the US Open and she was getting booed, taking ages. 
Um, and I just wondered if you're saying that she's a troll. Is she doing something similar here to Ostapenko, who is very easily wound up? A laugh? A I think laugh? it was a laugh. All right. A laugh? <laughs> <laughs> thought he was being Irish. Um, I saw that. Huh? Ghost, I was speaking about this earlier on. I was speaking about Coritan Mute in, uh, in Santiago and just the best bam up, uh, as we say up here, the best wind up. You know, when he um, when he beat Nico Jari and he'd underarm served him and he then was like doing the jock of his like, celebration at the end of the match. And then he was... He got um he got the the commentator they took the commentator's mic and he said un minuto un minuto please respect everybody <laughs> and it was just a total total piss take and it was so funny uh, bam so we up up here in Scotland we, if we're winding somebody up we would say I we bam them up so I he bammed me up or I I was bamming him up and that's how we say like winding up is bam bam is also a Ned which a Ned is also a chav. Does, do, do you know? Me, uh, they've actually just shown the Ostapenko match on Sky, and she's three two up. So she's tall back now. from two from two nil down. Okay, bammer. Yes, bam, 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 bam. Right. Okay, bam, bam. Time for Dan. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. So uh, Dan Evans three two. Uh, Sun is out now. Um, and really annoying. Did you see in the Murray match last night against Berrettini, the, the wee sun trap towards the end of the match and you just couldn't see the ball? Yes, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right at the end. It was really bizarre. Like It was like, mm. it's obviously because it's in this stadium that's not a tennis court. So whatever yes. way the light's hitting it, it was just like this block of sun from nowhere that was right on the Berrettini side of the court and you just, when the ball would go through it, you just lost the ball. It's mad how they do it, isn't it? Like they put a tennis court inside a bloody stadium. Like what? Yeah. And then <laughs> and they, when you think about it, when they, do that wide, when they do that wide shot and show it in the stadium, it looks so weird. Yeah, like, yeah. I <laughs> uh, see John must have spotted it as well. Yeah. I have no idea what Tom said. Right. So you know what a wind up is? When you wind somebody up, Am I, is that a Scottish thing or does everybody say that? No, 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 wind up's not a Scottish thing, no. Right, no. okay. So wind up is when you're teasing or you're like a practical joking, as you might say in the United States. What we say in Scotland is, oh, I, I was bamming them up. So like bamming is the same as winding them up. But the word bam can also mean in Scotland is like a ned but then I realised that a lot of people might not know where Ned is. So then I had to say a Ned is a Chav. But then you might not oh, know where okay. Chav is. I know what that is, yeah, yeah. So then I met a few I, of them in my time, yeah. Uh, but I'm speaking to Ghost. He might not know what a Chav is. So then I'm like, you're right, okay, if you don't know what a Ned or a Chav is, then I don't know how else to explain it to you. <laughs> what was that Ned to Chav thing? <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> so it's like, I don't know, like Bam's like... You know, Ned's like, I don't know, like the young team. Like, I don't know. Greg, help me out here. Explain to me, explain to the, the public what is a Chav. A Chav is like, it's a guy who just, it's usually a man. You kind of get woman Chavs, obviously, but it's usually a man um, or a boy or something like, you know. Kids. You're going to have to be so like, careful here. You're going to be, it's so, yeah, good. I know. You're sweating. I, know. I can see it, Greg, you're sweating. I'm trying to think of a polite way to say it. Exactly. But there is no polite way of saying it, really. Um, right, as, right as in, please, with your best explanation as to what is a chav. Let me let me get a Google on this. The, the person who can who can explain what a chav is without. There we go. I've got a Google anyone. definition. Ready? Right. Greg's got a, de a young definition person of a, of a type characterized by coarse and brash behaviour, with connotations of low social status. There you go. Who is the poshest person amongst the talking tennis community? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I'm going to leave that up to the talking tennis community. To, yes, like, I'm going to plead the like, fifth. Yes, plead the fifth. I like that. I like that. Don't incriminate myself. Um, <laughs> Jack, yes, I, I like uh, 
very well spoken fellow. I think I would I would say well spoken rather than I I ghost I a hundred percent think you're a chav. Hundred <laughs> percent. This match is going to be over before we know it, and we've not spoken about it at all. No, oh, you're kidding, no one. I've I've talked us through Hunters. Um, okay, you're right, though, Craig. You're right. So I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, Evans is 40 30 up in this sixth game. Wait, hold on. I've actually think Ghost is Lance. Ghost is Lance. Like well, how I picture the books, how I it? picture what Ghost looks like in real life is what I picture that Lance boy. That's what I so I think Ghost is Lance. Dan Evans wins four two. Yeah, so I'll go running out of time to save this one. He, he is serving now. Um, the shadow is creeping over the court. I wonder if that's going to be a factor. Um, I will talk us through these next few points um, uh, and make sure that <clears throat> anybody who is in it for the tennis. Uh, we'll get some tennis tonight before we finish up. Sonigo has just netballed a backhand. So we're love 15. Um, and we could be in the end game. We could have minutes left if Dan Evans can break here. And then he's got two chances at least to serve it out for the match. It'll be a really good turnaround. Probably a question for uh, Dan Evan Devotes. Devotes? 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 Um, when was the last time Dan Evans uh, came from a set down to win a match? Anybody know? Oh, that's a tough question. Well, John, you should know this then. This is the talking tennis derby. I like that. <laughs> huh? I like that. Clear, yeah, I wouldn't. I don't. <sighs> Not too sure. Has there, has there been any repeat uh, repeat custom? Um, or is it? Or do these players only do a one-time thing? We're talking tennis. <laughs> Stands. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure we. I'm sure we asked. Uh, I'm sure we asked the right questions. We don't offend anyone. Um, I mean, a, a lot of the guys are, are on site. Very polite people. You know, Vanch. I know he's now with tennis one. Strahari, Damien. Good lads. Don't think they would... I don't know. Again, pleading the fifth. <laughs> right, so Dan Evans, 40-15 down in this one. Sonigo, uh, lovely drop shot there. Um, killed the point nice and early. It was on the plus one. It's a very nice drop shot to make that 40-15. I know I'm a bit behind, but that was good. Yeah, that was the one, yeah. Um, so he's got a serve here. Damien Evans blocked backhand return. He's up at the net. It looks like he's went wide with that. Sonigo's got the drop shot anyway. Dan Evans, best rally of the match this. Lob goes in. Does it go in? Goes out. It goes out. Oh, that was a good rally. You'll see it in a second, Greg. Um, sure I will, yeah. Back and forth, that one. A um, couple of balls touched the line. Um, Sonigo tried to go for the lob. Dan Evans must have thought. You can always tell whether or not these lobs are good or not because Dan Evans was rushing back. And um, and <laughs> very good call, James. James is a good shout. Um, hopefully, yeah, James just, doesn't just watch out. Him. Yeah, hopefully, James isn't watching. Then I don't have to do a, a, a stream with him next time, and he'll be like, <laughs> um, it's like, remember this, <laughs> aye, or, or John will skew it like in the chat, James, Thomas, put it in the, put it in the group <laughs> chat, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just uh, add fuel to the fire. Uh, exactly. Right, so we're at Deuce now. On the Deuce from 4015, that's pretty Deuce good. Deuce from 4015. Sonigo went wide with a forehand. Really poor shot um, by Sonigo. Um, sometimes you say an unforced error is subjective. This one wasn't subjective at all. Weak, tired, um, really needs to stay strong and stay in it. If he wants to, to progress to round two, he might be looking just to get onto the clay season, he, as we mentioned, as we talked earlier on. Sonigo likes the clay. Be looking forward to Rome okay. this year. Get the home crowd. Try and get another run together as he did a couple They're going to have fun ago. in that home crowd, aren't they? There's going to be so many Italians there. Oh, yeah. We're sending her, we're sending her as a Grand Slam champ as well. It's going to be it's going to be good. Ronaldo, yeah, Sonego, Massetti. John, I think, I don't know if John's been to Rome, but it's right by... Um, 
it's right by the football stadium, is it not? Like the sure, I'm actually going to Rome this year, but I'm not in the, there for that. I'm sure, like literally, it's one of those complexes which I'll, I'll try and find tennis, it. <laughs> which I'm finding tennis. So many of them are like you know, like the, the, there's a there's a sports stadium not far from it, um, and yeah. I, I'm sure. Um, you've uh, no, I can't be Rome. Fuck's sake, I was just um, I was saying, uh, I can't be, I can't be, uh, I was about to say Juventus, but that's true. And obviously, I don't know, uh, maybe Roma's or Lazio, I don't know, I can't mind, but I'm telling you, there's a there's a football stadium not far from I'll double the, check. I'm going to Rome in uh, April, so I'll go and check. I'll go and check that for you. Is that not when? Oh, no, Rome's me, that's when Madrid. It? I think I checked it. I think that's why Madrid is on. I've just missed it. Nice. What are you going there for? Just a just a wee break, a wee holiday. A little family holiday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice one, nice one. I mean, I've heard it's very expensive though. I think it's good. Yeah, I've not been very there. Nice. I've been to Italy before, but not Rome. So yeah. I went to Venice. I went to Venice once. That's the only time I've been oh, yeah. to Italy. Venice too busy. Yes, too busy. I can imagine so. <laughs> I don't know why John finds that so funny, but it just was. It was just like you just can't move in the streets because it's just so busy and the yeah, streets yeah, yeah. are so tiny. So you're yep. just like you're walking in single file. I don't have my microphone, but you can hear me, yeah. I can yeah. hear you. Yeah. yeah. But it's so funny. You go Venice. I went there <laughs> once. <sighs> Too busy. <laughs> I know it's a bit like Partridge. It's a bit like Partridge. <laughs> uh, it's a bit Alan Partridge. You're probably. you're either walking or you're swimming. You can't. You know. You can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see how kind of ridiculous that sounds. Anyway, Sonego um, um, has won that game. Um, Dan Evans, I think he had a bit of a problem there with... <laughs> uh, had a bit of a problem with uh, somebody in the crowd. He was just... He was on deuce. Uh, Sonego won the point. Um, Dan Evans gestured into the crowd like with a kind of sarcastic thumbs up. I don't know if maybe uh, somebody made a noise or something. Um, probably, yeah, just one of those just being annoying for the sake of Did you of it. spot that? Did you see that? I, I didn't actually know, but um, from the sound of it, it's probably just someone just, like, giving him a hard time for no reason. Uh, um, that is an in interesting fact that Ghost is now telling us. Um, talking about an American's top sniper during the were Southern boys because they grew up with a lot of violence and shooting deer and raccoon and whatnot. Hi, Gene. Thank you for taking his, um, maybe not discussing uh, hunting <laughs> in the deep south of America. Um, just so, uh, yeah. Sorry, just to look at some other results here. Um, Bruce there's, Rory got, there's, uh, there's Ghost Meeting Alcaraz. Ah, there you go. Uh, Bruce Rory got the second set against Hartman, so that's one set all. And um, I don't know if you've heard of, um, well, obviously, Jamal uh, Munar. Is yes. playing against Martin Londa, Londaloose. Is that how you say it? Londa, something like that. He's actually Londa Loose. I'm going to say that is Go three love up actually against Munar. So very good start Jean for Munar, the young, good, young Spanish man. Jean Munar is good, a good clay court player. He's from the Nadal Academy. Munar, yeah, he comes through there. Um, yeah, so that's that's one, you know, that's a young, young Spanish guy again, another young Spanish kid. So see how he does. <laughs> Uh, hello, Susu and Amir. I don't know if that's two people. Um, and hello, Jean. Yes, I'm doing very well. Jean, I don't think I've I've seen you on the stream for a while. Oh, hopefully you were saying hey to me and Greg and not go stay and join. I'd be very offended if so. Um, but if you are saying hello to me, I'll just respond anyway. Um, yes, Jean, I am well. I hope you are too. Uh, Susu and Amir, um, if you are going to like and subscribe, you make sure you do it twice because you've put two names on your handle. That's the only way it works. Oh, yes. Um, so it's not just one subscription. You've got to make sure you do it twice. Um, can't get away with these cheeky two-name people getting one subscription. Um, anyway, Dan Evans, uh, three points, uh, 40 love. I was going to say three points. He's got three game points uh, and he holds to love. Um, so, yes, all good. Oh, good. Uh, he's a game away from seeing it. Sonigo has to yeah. serve to stay in the match. Um, or it's a, a Dan Evans. I think Dan Evans forgot it was a sit down. He's ready to go. He's ready to. Oh, no. <laughs> now he's going back the way. It's not a sit down. Um, it's not a sit down. Okay. I don't believe you. You'll see it in a second. Oh, um, yeah. He, he started He started sitting in the line, started walking back to his seat. He then turned around. I don't know if maybe the umpire said, no, you can't change whatever you were going to change. You've done that enough. Um, so anyway, Sonigo is serving 3-5 down. 
yeah, he's just walking back now. Um, oh, he went. Yeah, he went. Never mind. Um, <laughs> so maybe it wasn't a sit down. He didn't realise. I don't know. I think I've got a feeling he was maybe trying to change something, or maybe, or he just had a you know was like, oh no, I don't want to do that just yet, or something. Did he think it was new balls? Maybe. No, I, I think he's probably because he's he's receiving. He's trying to change racket because of the, ball, ah, the new okay. balls, and then. I think he can only do that a certain amount of times. Um, and I think the umpires went, hold the bus, son. Jog on. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, aye. so anyway, love 15. Uh, oh no, we're on 15 all now where I am. Is that Evans just went long with a return. Double fault to start off that game for Sonego. Not good. Sonigo 7 now from the Juice Court. Uh, he's went for the drop shot. He's pulled it off. Uh, got to be fair to him. He's tried that a few times. Um, he has uh, he, it's come off more times than not. Uh, there has been a couple of ones that were wasted. Um, but yeah, uh, a lovely lovely drop shot there by Sonigo. Dan Evans uh, attempted to go for it um, and then just realised he just wasn't going to get anywhere near it. Sonigo's actually won more points in the match than Dan Evans, but the beauty of tennis, I always call yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the reason why tennis is such a an enthralling, compelling sport is you can win more points than your opponent, but um, but you can still lose the match. So eighty to seventy six. Uh, if anyone was wondering, it's uh, eighty to seventy six. It's quite a disparity. I mean, you know, you've got to go down to the fact that he won the first set six one fairly comfortably. Uh, well, fairly yeah. very comfortably. Um, I mean, they say what tennis is either the most genius sport in the world or the the most craziest sport in the world because of that <laughs> exact score um, setup. But he holds four five. Uh, the players do sit down on this occasion, um, but when they come out, they they will be uh, Dan Evans will be serving for the match. Uh, and Nadal won two big matches, winning left points in his opponent team of the US Open in 2018 and Medvedev Australia Open final. Really good. Um, yes, Jim. Did we not know that. The first set six one. Yes, he won it very comfortably. Indeed. Yeah, very comfortably. Yeah, it was. It's like it didn't happen. Just, just forget about it. <laughs> well, he's making Evan serve it out now, anyway. So, uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, getting on a, a little bit of hydration. So let's just uh, be hypothetical here, then, uh, Greg yep. and Evans. Takes this match here, uh, wins this game. What does that do for his confidence? You mentioned probably the Chris Eubanks. Have you got him? You got him beating Eubanks in the next one? Uh, despite Eubanks' seeding, yes, probably. Um, he's always he's a tricky customer. Eubanks, we saw that in uh, Wimbledon, was it when he had that big yeah. run? Yeah, um, yeah, we saw that on his day. He can he can be great, um, but I think he's lost quite a few matches in the row. I don't know the actual stats on that. Um, but every time I've seen him, he's, he's sort of not done very well. So he's looking for a bit of bit of confidence. Dan Evans, he'll have a lot of confidence going in from this, especially from winning yeah. um, from a set down and the way he's done it as well. He's played very well since then. So, yeah, I think all the momentum will be with Evans and that's what he thrives on, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he ends um, a four... Uh, a four match losing streak did I say earlier? Um he Yes, I think he did, yeah. Streak. First time as well if he if he gets through this game, it'll be his first time uh beating uh Sonigo uh in four That'll attempts. be huge as well. That's huge. So, uh, yeah, Sonigo mental. beat him in, in, in Australia uh, in four earlier in the year. So a yeah. big win. It'll be um, first time as I said, the key stat, first top one hundred win at an ATP Masters. So, um, so yeah, I think this will give him a lot of confidence. He can yeah. go up and face Chris Eubanks with a, a renewed confidence. And he'll, he'll probably know he's probably a better player than Eubanks. Um, uh, Eubanks has obviously um, had a, a, a recent surge thanks to the Grand Slam success. Yeah. But yeah. I think, uh, I think, yeah, I think he can he can go in there. And, he made uh, many quarters, which um, goes to just remind himself I didn't realise that. What's that? Oh, I forgot that. That he made um, quarters in Miami last year. Eubanks or yeah, yeah Eubanks is a qualifier. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. I'm just looking at it. Yeah, that was a, and then there was another one on grass. I think was it uh, Newport? He won or was it Mallorca? One of the two. Um, just before Wimbledon. 
And uh, and then yeah, and then that's when he, he kind of made his surge, Mallorca. Thank you, John. There you go. Um, and then that's when he made his surge up the rankings. So we'll watch this. Uh, could be the the conclusion of this match. We've been one. We're two points down. Uh, we're at fifteen all. Um, Sonigo's just put away a volley after coming into the net after pushing Dan Evans back. So um, it was fifteen love uh, to Dan Evans, as you, as you can see by the scoreboard. Starting to get a little bit offended that uh, my name was never put forward for the poshest of the talking tennis community. <laughs> Not that I would want to be the, the poshest, but does that mean that I'm definitely not posh? Um, <laughs> and uh, I am a little bit offended, not going to lie. I am a, so if anyone wants to put my name and save myself some a face, please do. Uh, bah, 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 bah. 12 minutes past 10 here in the UK. Uh, we are at 15 all. Second serve, Dan Evans which means it's, what, 12 minutes past six in Miami. Dan Evans, has he just double faulted? No, it was a let. <laughs> no, you call it a posh person in Scotland, you call that a Scottish conservative. Don Connery's a great shout for a posh Scot. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. That's a great shout. <laughs> Although he was, a, I mean, he turned posh, though. He was a milkman. Anyway, backhand to backhand. <laughs> nice backhand by uh, by Dan Evans has won the point. Someone who goes up to the point and it goes way. Dan Evans thirty fifteen gives a right. Ah, that's what I just said. He was a milkman. Or are you are you are you translating it? All oh, right. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus! What a laugh, eh? <laughs> what a laugh. You got a laugh. I have a strong accent, yes. I need to I need to slow it down. I'm going to slow it down. I need to posh it up, Gene. That's what they're telling me. They're trying to tell <laughs> me to posh it up, Tom. Can you do an English one? Yeah, mate, I can do an English one. <laughs> it's not bad, actually. Is not that all terrible. right? Is that, that all right? right? <laughs> there you go. That was all bad. Right, yeah. That was all right. Uh, John's going to, next stream, he's going to say, Tom, just uh, just speak. Just speak English. Just, <laughs> just do that the entire time, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we're at 40 15. We're at two match points for Dan Evans. Amongst all the tomfoolery, um, Dan Evans has just set up match points with a backhand winner down the line. He fist pumps. This is when Dan Evans looks like a player when he's got that kind of yeah. angry, devious ness uh, in his eye. He's, uh, yeah, he's looking like um, he is on the verge of winning this match. Um and yes, I did. Yes, I did. I'm sure I did. I, I can't I can't remember what it is, but I remember you sending it going watch this or something. Anyway, it's I've great, got a match point. I've got a match point to commentate to on. Match point, that I've one. got a match point to commentate on, and he's trying to distract me. Hmm. Okay, Dan Evans. Dan Evans. Oh, it was a good serve. Sonigo hits the net. Game set and match. Dan Evans, uh, yeah. one six six three six four. He sees off Lorenzo Sonego. First win. The two players embrace at the net. Um, but yeah, great win for Dan Evans. Um, he will now face Chris Eubanks. Greg has him winning that match as well. So we could see Dan Evans versus at least possibly Zverev. Um, maybe even um, elsewhere. So, sorry, somebody came into the room when I'm just trying to finish up. Um, you, can, you can tell from his reaction he needed that. That was a yeah. relief, a relief hit of the uh, hit the ball into the into the audience. Yeah, good win for Dan Evans. Um, uh, so we we went through a lot tonight, Greg. Um, plenty of uh, plenty of content for for Edmund. Maybe even a couple of parts where John can use the at the end of year anniversary video. Um, I don't know. Um, but yes, anyway, like, subscribe. There's ne nearly 200 people in here watching it. I, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you've understood it. I hope you haven't been distracted <laughs> by um, tangents and uh, and nonsense. So, um, Greg, anything you want to add? No, not really. Just, um, yeah, good luck, Dan Evans, in the next round. And, um, yeah, take care, everyone. Have a good evening. Enjoy the rest of the tennis. Nice and simple. I like it, Greg. Okay, thank you very much, John. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Ghost Gene. 
Jake, Simon, probably missed some of you. Um, but yeah, good chat. See you later. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.